wanted to uh, hit record, by the way. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Yes, I, I do remember to uh, hit record today. But yeah, uh, hello, everyone, and welcome to session six of the Wrath and Glory game Depths of Trollius. Uh, if you're unaware, we are using the latest rules that have been put up by Cubicle 7. Yes, the errata version. Though that said, uh, we're not rule experts, and we're going to look things up. So if you're expecting high-level play, uh, maybe not. Uh, but if you want to play catch-up, the VODs are on YouTube and are very easy to find. If you need a link to the YouTube, should be right below the stream. But uh, with that said, let's go around and have everyone introduce themselves, especially because we have a new individual joining us tonight. So let's start with Brother Harad. Hello, everyone. Um, my name is George. I'll be playing Brother Harad tonight. Um, he is a Dark Angels Primaris Space Marine. Uh, you can find me, my social media, uh, Twitter at Strom12341, uh, YouTube at uh, Strom Plays. And uh, yeah. Up next is Eric. You're muted. You're muted. Uh, yep. Hi, everyone. <laughs> my name is Eric. Uh, I'm Eric Vulgaris everywhere, and I play Sister Rosencrantz, the Sister of Battle of the Order of Our Martyred Lady. And then it would be you, Torvian. Hello. I'm Ben. I'm going to be playing Torvian, a bit of a wisecracking medic from the Imperial Guard. And now we have our new lies. phase. Hello, uh, I'm Jason. Uh, I'll be playing Lady Captain Radha Marbray, a rogue trader. Uh, and uh, well, uh, I'll be handling the facial duties. There's probably a better way to say that. Um, Perfect. Yeah, no. Phrasing. You know what? I'm a, I want to stick with it. Yeah, great. <laughs> All right. And certainly last but not least, our inquisitorial agent. Yes, I may or may not be an inquisitorial agent. Um. Oh, at least one of us God. isn't sure. <laughs> one of those is true. One of those is false. <laughs> I cannot I confirm or nor deny those things. One head speaks only truths. One yeah. speaks <laughs> only lies. Uh, I'm Cassa, so if you uh, wish to find me on the internet, good luck. Um, otherwise, enjoy the ride. All right. I love it. And with that, let's run the very quick introduction for branding purposes. All right, and welcome back. So we're going to pick up our session uh, pretty much half a day later uh, after the climatic battle uh, that occurred on top of the planetary governor's spire on the uh, world of Trollius. Now, four of you, Brother Harad, Rosencrantz, Torvian, Shank, you all have managed to get a airlift out of the Hive City and are headed currently back towards the flagship of Rogue Trader Veronius, the grand cruiser known as Ducal Circlet. And as you sort of look out the window of your transport, um, what you're seeing is a grand cruiser. Um, I think I actually have a map for this, all things considered. I do. Look at me thinking ahead. So uh, what you see is, again, a grand cruiser, and it's absolutely decorated with all form of livery and the types of things you would expect to see on an imperial vessel but of note the bow of the vessel um, is colored to match that of Veronius's house so blue and gold um, everything looks immaculate like usually an imperial ship would be sort of run down sort of, sort of, ah, sort of older looking uh, I guess you could say even antique in a way Everything looks like he might have, like, serfs literally go out on the hull and polish things. That's how new it looks. Um, but as you guys sort of fly in, um, your journey has been otherwise uneventful. Um, you did hear from your Eldar contact that the women and children uh, from the Hadlock, they have made it out safely. Um, they are currently on the remnants of the craft world on the world of Trollius. Um, they are sort of waiting to hear back from the rogue trader Veronius to what to do with them. Um, but sort of to get us to the first scene, uh, what happens is, is your transport flies in and lands on Veronius's ship. 
and a servitor meets you and asks to uh or sorry asks for you to follow it so uh as you are led through the ship you are led right up to deck one uh where you enter into a meeting room uh that is again very immaculate looking and what you're seeing is hollow displays you're seeing um sort of wide sweeping ceilings with uh what is it called um tinted glass and other sort of ornamentation that you might expect to find on almost the most pious of uh, ships of the Imperium. But of note, there's two figures here. The first is, of course, rogue trader Veronius. And Veronius himself is a darker-skinned individual. Uh, he is dressed extremely well, but not ost ostentatious. Uh, he has a naval coat, breeches, and boots of sable gray, and uh, blue colors as well as some gold mixed in. And of note, you note that he has a hotshot last pistol and a power sable or power saber that hangs from his belt. And that's the first character. The second character is one that uh, I'm going to let introduce themselves. So tell us a little bit about Lady Captain Marbray. Sure. Uh, uh, Lady Captain Marbray is uh, sort of in her uh, late 20s uh, by... Uh, Appearance. She's got sort of uh, Middle Eastern sort of features. Um, she is of average height. Uh, she's wearing what looks like a um, a sort of Regency era kind of naval uniform with the epaulets and the buttons and everything like that. Even the neckerchief is there as well. Um, and part of that uniform has been augmented with these carapace bits of armor uh, that have got some gilding and sort of ornamentation to it. And uh, she um, she strikes a sort of, not an imposing figure, but an interesting one. She has a kind of perpetual smirk across her face. And you'll notice as you draw closer that she has, uh, her left eye is actually an augmentic eye. It matches the gold in the rest of her uh, black and gold uniform. Um, and she's just sort of patiently waiting there and uh, giving a, a curious cheeky eye to everyone involved. All right. And since it has been a while, uh, you know what, let's, especially even for our new player, let's just have everyone very briefly uh, speak about their appearance real quick. So obviously, Harad, you're armless, but uh, besides that. Yeah. So uh, Brother Harad, once again, he is a Primera Space Marine. Um, he has a, a relatively pale complexion, stands about 12 feet tall. Um, he uh, is, only? Yeah, you know, average height. Casual. Yeah, of course. Uh, he um, uh, his right arm is severed right at the bicep, uh, and it is a nasty patchwork of scar tissue and uh, like knitted over bone. Uh, he is wearing a a long thick cloak with like a just almost casual very peasant like clothes that's scaled up just to fit him who next I, anybody who wants to go really. okay sure mm -hmm. uh yeah then uh sister rosencrantz will go first or next well, i can go i can go again if you want yeah <laughs> i mean yeah that'd be nice so i can yeah. think of something. no i'm just kidding okay cool um standing next to brother rod let's just go by order of the most faithful uh, that makes sense. <laughs> standing, e next next. To, <laughs> standing next to uh, Brother Harad is a rather uh, stoic, postured um, sister of battle. Um, she's wearing her sort of adorned power armor, kind of now scarred and crunched down by some sort of like, you know, clearly battle damaged uh, and worn. Um, what's not worn, though, uh, is her 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 hair and her face and her expressions. Um, she still has that sort of like nice smug look. Um, and her cornflower blonde hair um, seems to be pretty stoic, like uh, pretty, pretty like clean and always that well kept like bob uh, that we all know the sisters of battle have. Um, she still, yeah, but despite our, the rest of us all kind of looking like exhausted, battle damaged, and even after kind of cleaning up, pretty, pretty worn, um, she seems like she's ready to go another like deployment. Just really quick, out of character. Yeah. Um, so the space marines are the emperor's chosen and you shot one in the back 
by accident. How is that affecting you? <laughs> I don't accident. Wanna, I, I don't want to talk about it. Like, I'm sure we'll if, get there. If I was allowed to be afraid, I would be afraid. <laughs> <laughs> but everything happens for a reason. And um, yeah, I, I actually, I think that's a really good point. Um, ben, I, I think then maybe the camera pans down a little bit, like to my side and in my hand is my um, rosarium. Like I'm gripping it. Like I'm quietly praying to myself, being like, please don't be in trouble. Please don't be in trouble. <laughs> Everyone's going to whip themselves in their own quarters. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, but also, I think one one last thing. I'm sorry, and then I'll, I'll pass the mic. Uh, I think the I'm kind of surprised by the demeanor of um, this new companion next to Veronius. At first, maybe I was a little confused on why our um, captain is so less ostentatious, but that quickly, uh, you know, why why a rogue trader would ever be not as flamboyant as possible. Um, but that is quickly evaporated upon um, looking at at this new lady captain. Um, and, uh, yeah, I just kind of looking at you maybe a little bit too much, like sure, afraid of that, that weird, that weird eye contact thing where it's like, oh, you make eye contact. And then I have to like look away real quick. Like it's kind of awkward. Just but, for posterity, yeah. brother Rod is making no attempt to hide his direct and obvious assessment of you. I duly noted. Okay, I'll go next. Uh, so, uh, Shank is a very ordinary looking man. Uh, he's about 5'11", not very tall, bald, um, and his armor was unadorned, uh, very plain looking. And if it had been in a regiment, the uh, regimental insignias have been scratched off, very gray. Um, but now, unfortunately, th through this mission, he is. Well, half of his face is burned. The smoke's still coming off of his armor and face and burnt flesh. And his eyes look like he wants to absolutely stab something in the face. Like, if he looks at you, he's appraising you for weaknesses and how he wants to take you down. You kind of get that from him when he looks at you. Yep. All right. So, um... Torvian is a average member of the Imperial Guard. Um, right now I've got a combat shotgun hanging at my side, and I just kind of glance over at you, give you a grin and a wave. I can just only... Just like nod, nod an acknowledgement. You know. I can only imagine what a rogue trader is looking at, a sister of battle, a... Uh, a... a as what is essentially the special forces of the Imperial Guard and a space marine and just some dude in flak armor is like, hey, what's up? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was getting serious, uh, serious Dr. Nick vibes. Hi, you, do? you know. <laughs> I'm with the band. <laughs> <laughs> One of them looks like he's been napalmed. <laughs> well, that was a pyrotechnic accident gone wrong. So. Mm -hmm. But yeah, uh, as everyone kind of comes into the room and stands around the grand hollow display in the middle, uh, currently the hollow display is showing the world of Trollius, and you see that there's these little print picks of light with floating text next to them, and even without a roll, you just would inspect them for a little bit and realize that every little pinprick of light is a team that Veronius is currently managing. If you had to guess, there's maybe about 40 or 50 on the planet. And uh, for flavor purposes, when the planet rotates just enough to show the hive you were just in, well, most of you were just in, um, you see that there are two other dots on the opposite side of the hive from where you guys came in, just to let you know from flavor purposes. But uh, once everybody is settled, uh, Veronius kind of looks around and says, hmm, Team Omega-3, I believe you are... One of the good ones. I wanted to meet you in person. Really? It had one. to be Omega-3 fatty I, acids? I was going really? to say the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> all serious. <laughs> but yeah, uh, Veronius actually wastes no time and sort of motions with his left hand at uh, Marbury and says, I understand you lost a comrade uh, during your last mission. And uh, the lady captain here, I believe, would make a very good replacement. So I've asked her to join us in this meeting. Greetings, everyone. Lovely to see you. Good to meet you. 
I'm the medic. I'm with the group. You know, somehow I'd, get, I'd gathered that. If I wasn't a space marine, I would absolutely stick out my stuff and go, nice to meet you, <laughs> but I got to play a space marine. Oh, of course. <laughs> Damn. You can still do that, except you've got no arm to stick out. <laughs> ah, he's being harmless. Was well, it your left arm or your right arm? Uh, it was the one with the bolt pistol, so the right arm. So, you know, you could be backwards. <laughs> Another rogue trader, you seem to be multiplying. Oh, there are plenty of us out here. We're sort of like brooches in that way. Yes, indeed. Mm. Oh, no, this is the part where you disagree with me and uh, say some sort of you know, medium level compliment. Not this time. Oh, well. I'm too tired. <laughs> oh, yes, I can see the sort of um, the decoration on the side of your face. Yes, I uh, need medical attention. <laughs> well, let's uh, uh, keep this briefing him... short, shall we? <laughs> Out of character, since this is a half day later, I would have been treating what I could on the trip back. Fair. So you might not actually be smoking still. Maybe it's like it smell like smoke. Yeah, I was say he definitely smells like it still. <laughs> but yeah. uh, Veronius actually laughs. It's a very uh, jovial laugh, you know, kind of like an old Santa figure you would find in the mall. Like it's a very, it's a pleasing laugh. Uh, but Veronius says, <laughs> oh, I think you all will get along lovely. But yes, I will let you go see our resident uh, Medicaid here in a moment. Uh, I simply wish to uh, understand uh, if there's anything you wish to tell me about your mission before I give you your new one. Oh. Mm. Well, Brother Hart, I believe you can go first. All right. I will give the debrief. Uh, after crash, after touchdown, we uh, vacated the crash site. We went in Spire Word. Uh, we made our way towards the central spire. Uh, in doing so, we encountered a rogue uh, Mechanicum acolyte. Uh, we also encountered a traitor legionnaire under its, I hesitate to say protection. It was more of a, a prisoner. Uh, once we had defeated that, we moved on towards the central spire and we destroyed the foul machinery producing the disgusting black snow. And Roni sort of nods as you say all this, and he actually calls up on the hollow table the image of the planet vanishes, and in its place forms what you all would recognize out of character as a chaos space marine um it doesn't seem to ha belong to any chapter in, spe in specific but uh, as he calls up this uh perhaps profane image he says yes that actually is going to be your next mission uh is to track down this traitor legionnaire that you mentioned uh your report didn't contain uh what chapter they might have been a part of are do you know yes we do would you care to but share I, with the class? Well, I suppose the information is not too classified. The traitor was not from a chapter. He was a legionnaire. Those and sons. Hmm. Very old. Thousand thuns, thousand sons. Those are the Zetian ones, correct? You're remarkably well informed. I mean, to be a powerhouse in a sector, one has to know things. I suppose so. It's also just fun to know them. And Veronius actually just, just, chuckles a little bit. I'm doing whatever <laughs> I can because I'm ordered to not, like, you know, shout out right now, but I'm doing everything I can to not blurt out being like, how can you be like this right now? We're talking about these things. <laughs> but I'm keeping it, uh, you know, well under wraps. But I'm sure you, anyone, I, I'm not trying to, you know, I'm not, I'm not super good at hiding my expressions. Yeah. Um, anyone can read it on my face. <laughs> now nah, I won't make him do a no. conviction. <laughs> but yeah, uh, Veronius uh, conjures up another image on the hollow table, and this time it's an image of the greater demon uh, that you released. Let it escape, however you want to flavor it. 
And uh, he sort of points at it with a finger and says, I, I have a feeling that this demon that you guys located and this traitor legionnaire, they've got to be connected in some way. Uh, that's why once you all have recuperated and gotten, well, some rest and relaxation on my ship, uh, you'll be headed right back to the same hive you just saved. And, right. Uh, our Lara got in touch with you, right? Uh, she did, yes. The Eldari informed me that our people are being treated well. Uh, they are ready to be picked up at our convenience. The only reason I haven't done so is because I thought meeting you was a little bit more important. Okay, great. Uh, besides all of this, I did pick up some evidence from the dead Trace Legionnaire of further conspirators. Any sort of motions There's... for you to produce it, whatever it might be? I'm going to pull it out of my um, secure pocket and place it on the table. All right. So for the folks at home, remind us what that is in specific. So I picked up a list of names and a command um, from a dead traitor legionnaire that we killed. Um, I was searching for evidence of further, well, conspiracy. That's gotcha. what I was looking for, and um, we found it. So this might possibly give us more leads. And, uh, who, oh, sorry, go ahead. As to who or what might be uh, essentially perpetrating these nefarious uh, acts. And uh, Veronius kind of waves his hand through the hollow table, and and this might not be 40k, but I think it's cool flavor. Um, what happens is almost like a a photocopier. Um, there's sort of a bright beam of light that scans the list, and after a moment, uh, all of the names sort of appear midair, and you see sort of a working symbol as a search is beginning to run. And Veronius says, well, we'll certainly search through our cogitators and see if anything comes up. But um, this is a remarkable work for your first mission. I'm glad I put you all together. Seems you worked very well together. Okay. Uh, that list is needs to know, so it's classified. Don't let it get out. Well, not to worry, Inquisitorial Agent. I also play host to the Inquisition on my ship. I know how things work. This... I hope so for your sake. <clears throat> This legionnaire that you want us to track down, do we have a name? There is. However, and he looks deliberately at Sister Kranz. I want to make sure that I don't blow the sister's mind by saying it. I believe that she'll be able to handle it. I can speak for myself, and yes, I'll be able to handle it. Very well. Then it is actually someone you are somewhat familiar with. Which was odd, but uh, I'll let the text speak for itself. And uh, he conjures up another name, and the name floats midair before Sister Kranz. And I'm, I know I'm sort of injecting backstory here, but I think it's You're good. good flavor. Keep going. You're good. Um, so the name that comes up, and I'm copying it from my notes so that you all have it in the proper form. Um, the name is Adjiwolf, and, and I'll put that in chat. And Adjiwolf, you know... Uh, he was someone that was sort of a servant or a janitor yeah. uh, in your sisterhood. But that doesn't make sense. How is he a janitor, but also a CSM? You know, there's a disconnect there. But as you sort of look at the name and a dossier begins to pan out, it, it's yeah. it's almost looking like a doppelganger. Like everything seems to line up. Yeah, I'm staring kind of dumbfoundedly, right? Like for this is kind of rocking my world, being like, no, there's no, there's no way. But I'm, I'm not, so, I, I, you know, I'm verbally doubting it, but I'm just, you know, I have to accept it at one point. I'm just in the currently in denial phase, right? So mm -hmm. is it just the name and information that's lining up or do they look the same? Yeah, and actually as the dossier finally gets to a picture, exact splitting image. The reason I'm asking is because, so there's a Chaos Space Marine janitor they have done weirder stuff. This almost seems like it's the work of a different legion. I, I, it One just, that I cannot mention. <laughs> I dare not fathom the the motives of such a her, heretical order, but a sanitation. I what? <laughs> <laughs> it just strikes me as kind of weird. It's like 
<laughs> Space Marine sized dude's gonna kind of stand out. Who's like, yeah, I can. I'll just mop the floors. I'm cool. And yeah, Kronz, what I would say is, yeah, now that you think about it, you're thinking about Agi Wolf. He was larger than most others. Who better um, to haul away the million tons of trash that humanity produces on a daily basis? And who better mm. to look, go unnoticed as they go everywhere than someone who takes out the trash? Don't worry, now, the clergy aren't very hard to fool. I'm not surprised. <laughs> now, uh, I want to test myself for something here. That isn't like fear or corruption. I'm just testing to see how my character would respond like upon this realization. Like, would I get angry or do something stupid? Okay. Uh, and I definitely do store. I, I don't like curse or anything like that, but I definitely leave. Okay. Um, because yeah, I mean, I, I was like, ah, well, it's probably if I get at least a two on my conviction test, I'll be fine, right? But I, I'm, I'm just gonna storm out. I'm gonna be like, <clears throat> so I was not okay with it, right? <laughs> and uh, as Kron storms out, like Veronius thinks for a moment, like raises his hand as if to call after her, but thinks better of it and says, "I, that's kind of what I was worried would happen, but I'm glad she didn't start shooting things with a bolter. Is that not right, brother?" And he smiles at you warmly. Impeccable aim. Yes, into your back. <laughs> well, I've given you your mission, and I think this meeting is pretty much done. Uh, Lady Captain, uh, would you be so kind as to escort these lovely individuals to the Medicaid ward? Of course. All right. Now, uh, gentlemen, please, if you'll come with me. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> All right. Sure. And... Funnily enough, I will be at the Medicaid ward helping people. Very nice. All right, so we'll go back to our little theater of the mind map for a moment. So when you guys enter into the Medicaid ward, you see that it is actually, again, very well maintained. Almost like a running theme here. Um, you're seeing not just actual tech priests of the Order Biologists. Um, you're seeing other sister hospitalers. You're seeing servitors that have been configured to handle wounds and perform nurse-like duties. Um, but there's one individual in particular that stands out among all others. And this is a free question to everyone, but uh, has anyone seen a tech marine before in character? Yes. No, um, I think I served with mm -hmm. the Death Watch in my backstory. I don't think I saw any tech marines though. Okay. So for those who may not know what a tech Marine is, basically what uh, you're seeing is an individual in space Marine armor, but it has been configured such that he can use um, mechadendrites. And the mechadendrites are medical in nature, but also you're seeing like uh, soldering iron, you're seeing uh, tools that would be used in perhaps the maintenance of armor and equipment. Um, the other thing you would notice about this towering sort of hulking space marine is the fact that he is wearing the livery of the space wolves. So this is essentially an iron priest. And uh, for flavor's sake, as you all walk in, uh, the iron priest sort of looks over in your direction and beelines for Brother Harad. And as he comes up to you, Brother Harad, he says, Ah, it's good to be seeing you, brother. How are you doing? Besides the arm thing, I can see that. Yeah, I'll stick out my left arm and the warrior's uh, handshake, you know, grab the his wrist pauldron. Mm -hmm. And of <clears> course <throat> he returns it. Yeah. Mission was a success. Very good. Uh, would you like anything special with your new arm? I had it already prepared for your arrival. Mm, well, I did seem to lose... I, I do seem to lose uh, things from my hands, so I was figuring may as well I unholster the bolt pistol. May as well put this in the arms. So it's harder to lose. All right. And one of his mechadendrites sort of reaches down and takes the bolt pistol and an optical mechadendrite begins scanning it. And he says, very good. I think we can do this. Um, you there, small man, pointing at Torbian. You do not look injured. Are you here for moral support? Uh, I'm I'm the team medic. I, I can... Good, you then know, you can go help that patient stories. over there. And he points with a mechadendrite at a uh, screaming patient surrounded by servitors. I believe uh, you would be needing there more than here. Okay. And I'll go Torbjorn... and pull out a dose of a sedative and just kind of 
Gotcha. <laughs> no longer screaming. And yeah, as Torvian goes over and injects a sedative, uh, the tech marine actually sort of gets on one knee, so he's eye level with you, Shank. And he says, mm. I, I will not say w but uh, what is uncertain in public, but what I will say is I know of your purpose, Corporal. How do you know this? Simply because um, there are already rumors among the, shall we say, devoted. Hmm. Noted. Good. But I need medical attention now. <laughs> Yes, I see that, and <laughs> that's what I wish to ask you. Do you wish me to replicate new flesh, or just treat the existing? Good question. Yes. Yes, I would like you to treat my flesh. Although, the facial scars I'd like to keep. Very good. I think very you'd good. understand. Of course, of course. And oh, of course, how rude of me. Uh, I am Priest Eberwolf. And I will put that in chat for you guys. Hmm. Is I am very minor uh, uh, narrative declaration. Mm -hmm. uh, me and Priest um, Eben Wolf have met and sparred a number of times already. Cool, I love it. All right, I'm gonna sit on the bio bed and pull out an IO stick and start smoking it. All righty. So uh, I'm curious, you know, Kronz, you said you were, um, and we'll get to you in a second, Lady Marbury. Um, Kronz, you said you were treating people in the med bay, or were you getting medical yeah. attention yourself? Uh, tell us a little bit about that. Uh, a little bit of both. I think maybe, at the, like, not to do a full scene or anything like about it, but probably when I first come in, because I, I do, I do, like, then, like, show that, hey, I, they, 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 or they probably see that I'm a little bit hurt. I'm like, no, it's not about me. I want to hear, I'm here to help. Um, and I'm like going to raise my Medicaid skill. And this is sort of like the first montage of me kind of helping people okay. and raising up my skills this way. I love it. So, uh, Marbury, uh, tell me, uh, what is your uh, perception score like? What is your awareness like? Let's see. So my awareness is a six in total. Ooh. Ooh. Uh, you know, just to get you used to rolling, uh, why don't you roll me that awareness? I will do that. All right, so two successes. The difficulty was only a one, so you pass. Uh, as you're looking around, something strikes you as odd about this med bay. Uh, of course, maybe the fact that it's clean is one thing, given the state of the Imperium. Um, mm -hmm. But what you notice is all of the hospitalers, all of the tech marine, or not tech marines, tech priests, um, all of the servitors, all of them are female. Every single one of them. Or at least female presenting. Hmm. No, isn't that old? But then again, I'm smoking on the bed, so I don't really care. I'll say, uh, Lady Marbury just kind of quietly, under her breath, uh, says, uh, "A little vestrogen in the room that <laughs> can't hurt." All right. So, uh, Brother Harad, let's treat you first. So, obviously, out of character, you've already determined uh, what your implant is like. But for the class, uh, tell us a little bit about your implant. So, uh, getting an augmented arm to replace the, uh, the one that doesn't exist, which increases my strength score by plus one. Mm -hmm. um, and since I spent XP to get it with the augmented trait or talent, it gets two rare or lower uh, augments. So the other rare augment is the implanted weapon, which uh, was with the bolt pistol. So it's still the one arm, but it is two augmentics in one. Got it. And uh, sure enough, when that armament comes out, uh, borne by servitors, uh, the tech marine Eberwolf easily attaches it and it doesn't even take major surgery to do it. This man is very skilled at what he does. And uh, minutes later, you are flexing your new digits. Uh, so I imagine the arm is not a subtle uh, one. It's made of very heavy, uh, like iron and wrought iron and steel. It almost looks uh, sort of like a thick skeleton, um, just with a, if you had taken the skin and muscle away. 
Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, you can see like right in where the forearm would be is where like you can almost tell there is a bolt pistol, but only because you know it's there. Gotcha. All right. So we now turn our attention to Mr. Shank. So you wanted to keep the facial scars. I got that much. But the rest of the flesh, you want sort of synth skin or vat grown skin put in its place? Um, Just heal it up. I don't care for any cosmetics. Just make sure it's not infected. I mean, I'd keep the torso scars as well. Gotcha, gotcha. And I have a uh, sort of a flavor question. Um, how good is your nose? Uh, it looks like it's been punched once too many times. Okay. Uh, how would you rate your sense of smell? Average. Average. Then what would happen is one of the servitors will come over and uh, with an arm, it begins applying a salve to your skin. And it uh, it's very cooling, the salve. It's uh, a, sort of a lime green color as it's spread across the burned areas. Um, but what you're noticing is the smell. The smell is somewhere between motor oil and decaying hair, which if you've never had the pleasure of uh, decaying hair, count yourself lucky. It is one of the worst smells out there. Mm. Ow. Ooh. <laughs> oh. I wish I had an anesthetic for this. And the servitor raises its other arm and says, I can apply if necessary. On second thought, I think I'll stay conscious for this. Very I don't well. trust you very much. <laughs> Lowers its I'll arm just, back down. I'm going to walk over and pull a couple of nose plugs out of my, like the ones that you, that are usually, in, that you put in nostrils to absorb bleeding. I'm going to mm -hmm. hand him a pair of those for him to shove up in his nostrils. Yeah, the, these are new, right? <laughs> sure. Okay, good. <laughs> So, uh, to sort of lead us into the next scene, uh, Marbre, you actually get a call from your ship on your personal Vox unit. All right, I will uh, take that out. Uh, yes, go ahead. Uh, yes, ma'am. This is uh, First Officer Thomason. I wanted to inform you that we have acquired that item of yours that you were looking for. Excellent. Uh, I'll be over shortly to uh, examine it. Very well. Um I understand we've gotten word from Veronius that we are expecting a party with you. That's right. I've made some new friends, and uh, you're to treat them with the utmost respect. Is that clear? That is very crystal clear, ma'am. I only have one question. Do we need to be in dress uniform? Well, the last time that we had, uh, let's say, dignitaries on the ship... Uh, there was a, a, a bit of a kerfuffle about the uh, lack of, uh, well, let's say, appropriate decorum showed. So I think uh, in order to uh, keep things, let's say, uh, professional, uh, everyone had better look damn good. Aye, damn good. Uh, second follow-up question. We've gotten a request from a canoness Safrax from the Order of Our Martyred Lady. She has asked to come aboard the ship. Should we allow her? Do you have any idea what she wants? Uh, unclear, ma'am. Uh, best we can tell is she's trying to reconnect with um, uh, Sister Kranz for some reason. Oh, good. Let's just uh, have everyone on board, shall we? Um, well, it would be unwise to uh, provoke her, prevent her from being on the ship. I suppose let her in. Should I give her the poor quarters, ma'am? Oh, no, no, no. It's not insult her, at least not yet. <laughs> Very good, ma'am. That is all. We look forward to you coming back aboard. Thank you, Tommy. Goodbye. If anybody has seen Avatar The Last Airbender, what just ran through my head was give her the good room that was once bad. <laughs> you may have one glory for that. I love references. Uh, it was more of, I got more flashes of um, hedonism bot from Futurama. Oh, that would be a good Tommy. one too. <laughs> more <Paul> icing. <laughs> more icing, please. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, Lord.
But yeah, uh, sort of to set the next scene. So you all, of course, are able to spend as much as time as warranted uh, in the medical bay. Um, but at some point, I think Marbury would sort of maybe start to corral you guys towards a transport. But that happens at your speed, not mine. I need to swing by a Imperial Guard location for an arf, uh, to go by their armory real quick. I'm assuming there's an Elysian detachment because um, they've got my sniper rifle, my las, my long las to go pick up so I can give them back their combat shotgun. Yeah, so uh, let's say for sake of argument to keep everyone together, um, you know, Torvian leads the four of you, the five of you, um, towards the quartermaster's, uh, what would you call it? Office, I suppose. And oh, uh, it's on the way towards uh, the landing bay. So, you know, you're, you're going along the way kind of a thing. Um, but Torvian, as you and the rest of the party enter into the quartermaster's office, there is a stark contrast with the rest of the ship wherein this is where you're seeing the squalor of the Imperium. You know, sort of rusted walls, uh, everything in disarray, equipment strewn everywhere, um, almost like pure chaos, like someone came through an, a tornado. Ah, it's good to be home. And uh, what just... you notice... Oh, sorry, go ahead. Sorry, I was no. going to call out to the Quartermaster. Yeah, that's... Get his uh, attention. That's what I was going to describe. So the Quartermaster, um, actually, when you sort of sigh like that, uh, there's a commotion to your left, and coming out of a pile of widgets and doodads uh, is a rather small, almost impish-looking quartermaster. Uh, maybe could have been a rattling at one point. You know, he's that sort of diminutive. Um, but he sort of does a, uh, to borrow from another uh, fandom, he almost does the Ferengi thing with his uh, hands where he's sort of drumming them together. And he says, ah, yes, hello, hello. We were expecting you. If you are who I think you are anyway. Yes, y'all have my long las and I, I know it needed repair and I appreciate you letting me use this shotgun, but um, I, I, I'd really prefer my long las back, please. Is it fixed? Uh, yes, it is very much fixed, but um, I have a question for you. I, I see you have requested a bayonet. No, I don't need the bayonet. Oh, I, I just I, I would like my long las back. Okay. Ah, uh, give me one Out of moment. Character, the bayonets for another time. Oh, gotcha. So uh, the rattling, as I'm just gonna call him, he gets up out of the debris and begins like sort of walking around, like looking in piles, moving things, and eventually goes, "Ah, yes, here it is." And uh, he picks up a long las and uh, Torvian for flavor purposes. I would say that what you're noticing is that the power pack actually extends further out of the weapon than normal. Oh. So what kind of... What, what, what Looks like it's gotten an upgrade. Well, I understand that you are, shall we say, among good company. And he sort of winks in a disturbing way, but you get the sense that given you have a very large Astartes and a sister with you... Yeah. I'm playing with the big boys now. And uh, almost like he's lost interest in you, Torvian, uh, the quartermaster looks actually to Brother Harad and says, you're a, you're a very large fellow, uh, but I, I see you don't have any armor. Would you like me to get you some armor? If you, <clears throat> if you have uh, armor that would fit me, yes. Uh, I believe something as... Uh, Thin as carapace would do. Uh, yes, I think I have some here XXL. somewhere. <laughs> and uh, as he begins coming through, if you actually want to roll that uh, acquisition test and see if he finds it. Yeah, right. So some ogren turned this in for you. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> like Remember, house. the story is he is an ogren. That's what everybody on the ship thinks. Yep. He's just uh, an intelligent ogren. All right. So, and I get. One additional influence because it shares two keywords with me. Mm -hmm. And I need to get five. Uh, four because you are in Veronius's ship. So, yeah, that's four successes. And yeah, we're going to roll at the Ogren angle. Uh, so he... it's, it's five because it's normally uncommon and you fluffed it down to common, which doesn't add the plus one. Oh, so gotcha. I have to spend a point of wealth. Gotcha. Okay. 
So, uh, yeah, we're going to roll with the Ogren angle where, yeah, he does pick out a very large, uh, oversized set of carapace armor. And, you know, he's struggling to carry it with his diminutive frame, but he he sort of lays it at your feet and says, Ah, here you are. Um, I will only ask one thing uh, in return. I will take one step closer and just look straight down. And he looks straight up, and uh, he starts to fidget a little under your gaze, and says, "I, uh, I understand you're you're friends with Eberwolf. This is tr- the truth. I, uh, I, uh, I, I'd like to get a get a hold of one of his mechadendrites, uh, uh, just for a little bit. I want to scan it. I will let him know of your request. Uh, that, that's really all I can ask." Lady Marbury will sort of uh, appear on the side of uh, of Harad's uh, arm. Uh, mm-hmm. Could we uh, hurry this along a bit, shall we? Ah, yes. Yeah, oh. Sorry, sorry. Uh, Torvian, there's your gun. Uh, big guy, there's your carapace. Uh, anyone else want something? What did you do to my gun? I, it looks uh, a bit different than it did. I gave it a new paint job. It's fine. Yeah, what I can't need anything. I'll take it from the other ship's on. <gasps> Hold on. What color is it? Uh, yeah. Roll me How's it a. Look different? Roll me a D8, Torbjorn. Just a standard D8. Let me see if I'm... Uh, salmon pink. Did it it not actually roll, might it be roll. pink, depending on what he rolls. You can just roll a, roll a D7 for Roy G. Bibb, right? Oh, slash R. <laughs> yeah, slash R. You're only allowed to have base 7 colors, man. There we go. Huh. Oh, there it goes. A four. Uh, let me consult my chart. Roll six, roll six D12s for me, and then that's oh, your hex code God. for your color. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. I'm having more flashbacks. Oh, God. <laughs> Anyways, uh, a four. Well, a four on my chart. Uh, ironically, it is pink, but it is not salmon pink. It is hot pink. You're looking at a My Little Pony Laz rifle. Nice. Very stealthy. Does mm-hmm. it have the complimentary bayonet? Oh, it has to. So it does have the bayonet? It does. But, okay. uh, you know, if you point this out, the quartermaster might go, oh, I could always take that off. I'm, I'm not going to point it out. I'm, I'm just... Huh, interesting color up. choice. It'll help me blend in depending on where we are. So yeah, cool. Maybe in a slow and actually pleasure palace, but... You make it sound Anywhere like else. there's zero chance we'll end up there. We do. <laughs> Three weeks later. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Star White. Yeah. Yeah. And I noticed that the power pack's a bit different. Uh, yeah, I had to go with a uh, Type 3 over a Type 2. I'm sure it'll be fine. Um, I'm going to make a tech check and then mm-hmm. have you tell me what that actually means. <laughs> sure. Yeah, go ahead and roll your tech. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, Lady Marbury will so check her chrono impatiently. Unless you want me to, you know, just take it and blow us up at some point. All right, a six. Uh, you could actually shift both of those uh, sixes if you so wished. Um, I'll shift one to glory and the other for more information. All righty. So what you gain, uh, not just by success, but also with the extra information, um, a Type 2 is usually used in standard LAS guns, uh, including long LASs. So standard sort of ammo complement. Uh, standard features like you could throw it in a fire and it will recharge, things like that. A Type mm-hmm. 3 is usually used in hot shot situations. Ah, hot shot ammo. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now, the one thing is you can't throw a hot shot into a fire unless you want an explosion. But conceivably, you might get a few hot shot shots out of this weapon. You know, uh, but I do still have my old LAS, LAS packs as well, right? Correct. Those will those will work. Okay, because the hot shot also reduces the range. Correct. So, okay. All righty. All right. I appreciate it. We all good to go. Yep, we're good to go. We're all done with the troll now. I believe yeah. so. This is not a perfect fit, but it is good enough. Lead on, Madam Captain. All right. It's about time. So, uh, Marbury, tell us a little about a little bit about the uh, landing craft or the shuttle that uh, awaits the rest of the party when you get to the landing bay of Veronius's ship. Uh, it is a uh, 
it is much like uh, some of the earlier portions of uh, of the uh, the ducat. Uh, it is immaculately scrubbed. Uh, it is um, as close to a sort of fresh off the line kind of appearance uh, as as you can possibly get, uh, and it has that same sort of black and gold kind of aesthetic as as her uniform. Um, I will say that. Uh, Inside uh, is uh, that same uh, Thomason uh, to uh, personally escort uh, the party over to the Vanishing Hand. Sure. And since I made uh, Thomason up on the spot, uh, I will continue to do so. Uh, so Thomason <laughs> is a shorter individual, not like Rattling size. He's, he's just short, maybe about 5'2", five, 5'3". Five, um, but it, as said, he is in dress uniform, so same sort of black and gold. Uh, with a sort of double aquila eagle uh, on his chest. And uh, what you notice uh, is that uh, he is not only smoking a cigar, but he has waiting for all of you. Uh, he sort of doesn't even ask. He just sort of opens the box. And there is uh, basically a cigar for each of you, if you would wish it. Oh, yes, please. <laughs> I'm good. No, thank you. I, I, I studied medicine for far too long to even want to brother i doesn't even acknowledge it he just walks in the in the shuttlecraft i will uh, gl- uh lady barbara will gladly grab one and uh gesture for thomas and to, to oh like he's up. already in the motion like he's already in motion with his lighter to get yours lit and Good. he says uh lady captain it's a pleasure to have you back with us um if it's not impertinent of me can i uh know the names of your travelers it is very impertinent of it actually my apologies <laughs> oh, oh. I'm Torvian. I don't mind you knowing my name. Oh, Tommy, you don't. You know very well when I'm joking and when I'm not. Oh, sorry, ma'am. It's it's a little confusing. Uh, it's been a while since I've been in this uniform, and he like tugs at his collar. That's all right. Is it still chafing a bit? Uh, yeah, I I've tried to get the quartermaster to let it out, but well, you could lose weight, ma'am. Ma'am, how dare you! Well, I, I'm just suggesting that... I'm joking you know, if with you, want ma'am. To... Oh, I see what you've done there. Very good. Well, let's uh, get this ball rolling, shall we? Sure. And yeah, unless anyone uh, interrupts, uh, the door of the shuttle begins and the ramp, the landing ramp begins to recede. And then you all hear a shout, a very loud sister-like shout that says, Oh, no, no, you are not leaving without me. You are... Stop it, you... Close and the door. if you close, close the door now, quickly. <laughs> and and as you uh, as you look out, all of you would see a uh, cannon S in full power armor, um, running at full sprint towards your landing craft. Tommy, close the door right now. I'm sorry, I'm we're pushing having it as fast as I can. I am literally we're having pushing. Some kind of technical difficulties. Excuse me. Brother Rod's going to stand up and physically hold the door from being shut. I love it. So the uh, the woman, uh, to give her a little bit of a description here, she almost looks like a spitting image of Sister Krantz, but with a few subtle changes. Uh, the first thing is that she actually has only one side of her hair. So if you were imagining like Sister Krantz's um, bob cut, it's almost as if the left side of her skull it has been shaved in an artful-like fashion. Um, mm-hmm. Almost like a like a cyberpunk hairstyle, if that makes any yeah. sense. Um, she also has an augmented eye uh, on her left side, and it's a very obvious one. Um, probably more for form over function. Um, and her armor, what I would say is that her armor is pockmarked with all forms of battle damage and wear and tear. And uh, obviously, as Brother Harad, as you hold the, the door open... Uh, the canonist wastes no time in sort of ducking underneath your arms and says, thank you, old boy. I appreciate it much kindly. And she sort of looks around the the, the uh, back of the, the shuttle, locks directly onto Sister Krantz and says, you, you and I are going to have a talk. Canonist. <laughs> and then that's like a cut, right? <laughs> yeah. 
So, uh, you know, uh, Thomason is uh, an immaculate pilot. Apparently that's the word of today, immaculate. Um, he uh, is able to get you guys out of the Golden Ducat, uh, or Dulcet, sorry, and is flying out towards uh, Lady Marbury's vessel. Um, wanted to give Marbury a chance here. Uh, anything special about your vessel? It has that same sort of black and gold aesthetic, but it also has what looks like... <laughs> There's a kind of Mad Maxian sort of um, quality to the vessel's architecture, so to mm -hmm. speak. Uh, to certain things that have been sort of very clearly don't match the sort of traditional imperial frigate design have been sort of bolted on and shaped and sculpted in a way. So it looks kind of um, motley is the term I would use. Okay. Uh, important question. Uh, any Xenotech? Maybe some, uh, you know, carefully sculpted and painted to look as from a distance as if, oh, that's just a, a strange, you know, hump or a, a weird addition to the ship. Very fitting. I love it. So I roll worked. my, um, oh. what was it called? Uh, investigation to uncover such xenotech. Yeah, you know what? I think that's a fun idea. So yeah, go ahead and roll me an investigation. Uh, I, I, as a space marine, will also try and figure out all the modifications on this device or on okay. the ship. Wait, you can roll investigation. Too. Are you, are you all on rogue traders a lot? That this would be like this is obviously not a normal like patterned ship. They know imperial frigates enough. Yeah, varying <laughs> varying okay. levels of knowledge, I would think. I know my Xenotech when right, I yeah. see it. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, you, you, yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> and I would see a non-standard Imperial vessel. Bring it, yeah. So, right. Hmm, wonder what that stuff is. Yeah, actually, Harad, you're looking at that and you go, well done. Yeah, I like the flying buttress there. Looks good. Uh, Shank, really? On the... <laughs> Shank, on the other hand, uh, Shank, you, uh, you're noticing that that... Uh, Extra crest on the dorsal side of the bow. That's not standard. That's not Imperium. And I'm going to let Marbray decide what that actually is if you ask her. Lady Marbray. Nah, that section over there. Looks a little odd, doesn't it? No, I wouldn't say so. I'll look around to... Don't you? It's certainly non-standard. Oh, well, if that's what you mean, yes, of course, it's non-standard. I've had a little bit of work done on the ship, uh, all in the interest of um, aerodynamics. Mm. Can I use on my psychic powers now? I'd allow it. Which one are you using? Telepathy. Telepathy. Okay. Let me uh, very quickly pull that up. All right. So telepathy is uh now just to be clear um unless you're doing this at a bound level i believe is what it is you could perils here in the shuttle i could indeed perils um, oh good all right so 278 i don't um difficult it was three anyway so i passed the flying colors excellent wow. All right, so the effect is is you reach out with your mind to link with another and communicate with nothing but thoughts don't need line of sight da, 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 da. So, yes, actually, you basically can speak in your mind uh, to Lady Marbury. Um, well, obviously no one else can hear this conversation. Mm -hmm. So that section really doesn't look human. So don't lie to me. Tell me the truth now. Am I uh, able to respond oh, yeah. uh, men mentally oh, yeah. as well? Okay. But you might be a bit shocked considering I'm not moving my mouth and I'm just talking to you. There's a bit of like eyebrows raised kind of surprise. Um, she uh, takes a moment to kind of swallow uh, and she says um, internally, as a rogue trader, there are certain um, elements that we utilize to uh, better facilitate uh, trade. And that would be one of them. Okay. But more specifically, which alien species? Well, um, 
you know, it's important to establish some kind of trust between the two of us. So I'll, I'll just be straight with you. I don't actually know. Mm. Well, considering I can scan, well, I can, with telepathy, you can only really read surface thoughts. You can't really go deeper than that. Do I sense it's cannot. true? Yeah. Yeah, actually, I'll, I'll take it as truth and I'll disconnect the link. I'm like, okay, I'm satisfied. And before it's fraud technology? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I'd be that mean, but... Uh, Let him yeah. Barbara sort of rub her temples. Okay. And uh, Thompson actually, uh, or Thomason, looks from the back or from the cockpit and says, "Is everything all right, ma'am?" Everything's perfectly fine, Tommy. If you would please take us in, and uh, if you could avoid the uh, the dorsal fin <laughs> around the other side, if you wouldn't mind. Uh, yes, ma'am. So we're canceling the ostentatious tour of the exterior. I think we'll cut it a bit short. Yes. Ah, yes, you're doing a Star Trek on us. <laughs> Okay, Star okay. One to be fair, <laughs> to be fair, that was what I was thinking, but I wasn't going to be here for 40 minutes describing the ship, so we had to cut it down a little bit. Some say that shot is still going on. <laughs> oh, you're not wrong. You're honestly not wrong. All right, so uh, as promised, uh, Thomas Cern, uh basically takes you on the direct route into one of the um, rear, the aft uh, shuttle bays. And as the shuttle comes to a stop and lands uh, deftly onto the deck plating, uh, Marbury, tell us a little bit about um, who's waiting there for you, if anyone. Uh, I would say that there is a small complement of security personnel. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I would say that my chief of security uh, is there. We're talking about maybe five or six people, including the chief. Mm -hmm. um, there to sort of, you know, uh, make sure that uh, our uh, uh, embarkation is as smooth as possible, uh, and to also, uh, covertly speaking, kind of get a read on these people that have come back with me, and maybe mm -hmm. start to compile some dossier information just in case I need to, say, Batman any of them at any point. I love it. I love it. So yeah, uh, again, as directed, all of them are in their, uh, well, for you, their dress golds. I was going to say navy blue, but I think with your aesthetic, I, I get the hint. So they are in, you know, black and gold, looks good. And uh, as you sort of lead the charge out of the ramp, um, the security officer uh, addresses you. Uh, would you like me to make up the security officer or would you like to take that one? You go right ahead. Yeah. All right. Then uh, let's say your security officer is actually a larger woman. Uh, isn't uh, definitely isn't Brother Harad's size. Um, she's maybe about six, eight, though. So still fairly tall. Yeah. Um, but uh, you notice that she is wearing carapace armor. Uh, she has a hotshot yeah. last pistol uh, wearing uh, on her waist. And uh, she is, um, how to put this? She is of a Asiatic descent, is how I would put it. Okay. Um, so maybe a little bit, a uh, little bit of color to her features. Uh, maybe a little bit narrower eyes, but I don't want to typecast too much. Um, sure. Yeah. But uh, she very respectfully sort of uh, comes up to you and says, "Ma'am, it's a pleasure to have you back among us. Uh, are all of your friends uh, clear to proceed without their weapons?" Or with their weapons, my apologies. Oh, yes, Sawaya, that's perfectly fine. Uh, these are uh, my uh, new crew members, so to speak. Squad members, I should say. And they're perfectly welcome on the ship, so please don't hassle them too much. Very well. And is that going to be her name, by the way? I think so, yeah. We'll call her Sawaya. Okay, just... throw it in chat just so I can write it down later. Sawaya, got it. All right, so uh, Sawaya looks to each of you in turn, and I'd like to imagine that Kronz, like the Canoness, is already trying to drag you yeah. away somewhere. Um, yeah, and I'm she goes, uh, uh, and, you know, Sawaya looks to you, uh, Lady Captain, for guidance on whether to let them sort of run off on your ship. Just a moment, Canoness, if you would, please. Uh, I believe we need some sort of... Uh let's say all hands meeting first, just to get everybody orientated and so they know their way about the ship. If you could hold off on your um, uh, conversation for just a moment, please. 
go ahead and roll me uh let's see because i'm thinking obviously this is fellowship but i'm thinking what else this could be in this terms is the of most skills. politest flex we've ever had in our game so persuasion far. love it yeah i would say a persuasion or yeah. maybe even a cunning would apply here well they're both the same for me so i'll, I'll try persuasion okay Oh dear. Great. Would you like to re-roll? <laughs> wow. wow. That uh you roll that worse is than impressive. I do, and that is, that is saying literally something. That's six dice with zero successes, everybody. Yeah, I, I tell you what, uh I'm gonna re-roll. Yeah. Okay. That's and it should work that you should just be able to click that blue re-roll button and it'll handle it for you. So that's Wait, a point of wrath, right? Yep. Yeah. Indeed. Shockingly unlucky. Well, not shocking to me. Reverse Yahtzee. <laughs> yeah. Statistically, shockingly unlucky. Right. Mega Yahtzee. So yeah, with uh, four successes, the DN was only a three. The Canoness very reluctantly sighs and says, very well, but at some point, I am going to need to have a discussion with my sister about proper aiming. <laughs> of course. Don't worry. You'll uh, have plenty of uh, latitude to deal with your sisters. You, you see fit. And uh, Sawaya says, um, all right, well, if all of you would follow me, um, briefing room two, ma'am? No, that one has the strange smell in it. Could we do briefing room one, please? Um, the only problem with briefing room one, ma'am, is we still haven't gotten out that stain. All right. What about briefing room three? I mean, it's briefing room three, ma'am. I don't think I have to say anything more about that. <sighs> I tell you what, let's have this little meeting on the bridge, shall we? And so I just sort of I'm nods. I'm sure and... the sisters have some incense, if you ask. Oh, no. I, 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 We've I, tried I that already. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate oh, the thought. <laughs> yeah. Nothing will get this out. Oh, I beg to differ. Pull up my plasma pistol. I think this can get out. Let's... Uh, yeah, like so why like instinctively like oh. puts a hand on her belt on the hot shot pistol because it is a sudden oh. movement. <laughs> Let's relax here. Let's remember that firing weapons aboard a void ship is generally frowned upon. Oh, depends if you're boarding or not. So right, Wyatt Bridget looks, is. <laughs> yeah, so, so Wyatt looks like she's not quite sure how to take that. Uh, but, you know, at this point, you guys journey to the bridge, and I knew I should have made a bridge one, but we'll just continue okay. to use theater of the mind. Mm. Um, the, good, the good news here, real quick, I just wanted to point out is that it, it's really nice that our Inquisitor is acting like that to me, so I can look at, like, just exchange eye conversations with my Canoness to be like, I mean, this is the group I'm with. I don't know. I can't help you. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, so that it feels, it makes me feel good, like I have some cover against my Canoness, so thank you. Yeah. All right, so uh, you guys take a lift up to the bridge, and it maybe takes about five, ten minutes, simply because even a frigate uh, in the Imperial Navy is such just a large ship. Um, but when you finally arrive onto the bridge, um, you step out of the lift, and the first thing in front of you is that command throne, um, the, the part of the ship where, if the Lady Captain so wished, uh, could literally directly interface via neural implants and control the ship in such a way. And the command throne, uh, there's a space before it. And then there's almost like a step down, maybe about half a story. So about half a flight of stairs. And the probably for about 50 to 100 meters, there are rows upon rows upon ro rows of cogitators, of servitors running stations, displays, holographic information floating in the air, maybe even a few tech priests into the mix. And... Um, as you step onto the bridge, uh, Lady Captain, uh, one of the servitors does comes up to you and offers you another cigar, because apparently that's going to be the running gag we're going with tonight. Uh, no, no, thank you very much. Uh, I've had enough for one day, shall we? All right. The, servitor, uh, the servitor actually at uh, Shank saying that looks to the Lady Captain for guidance. Yes, it's fine. And uh, offers uh, Shank the cigar and also does the polite lighting thing uh, where they kind of already are leading in. Be careful with the flame. He's had a little bit of uh, unluckiness with those things. I have. He has? Oh, okay. Uh, I pretend to be a little bit careful, but 
<laughs> I believe she meant you. You are burned. Ah, <laughs> oh, I get it now. It's been a long day. <laughs> that is okay. Have a nice day. And the servitor scurries off to do other things. Which, of mm. course, if you don't know, the running gag is that every single servitor has to tell you you have a nice day. Mm. Servitors are more polite than anything else in the Imperium. Mm -hmm. mm. But yeah, you're on the bridge. Marbre, if you want to run your own briefing, go for it. Sure, I'll uh, I'll make my way over to the the command throne. I will sort of turn on my heel and gesture to the entirety of the bridge, and I will say, uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Vanishing Hand. Please hold your applause. Damn. Okay, now you can go. <laughs> I love it. This is a fine void ship. Thank you. We've uh, done a lot of work on it, and I, I consider it a very tightly run ship. Yes, I'll look at your second in command. Tight indeed. <laughs> So then, uh, it looks like, uh, with uh, on the behest of a uh, jackal, we're going to uh, hunt down some traitors. Uh, do uh, any of you have any sort of further information on what we should expect from these um, enemies of the state? Shall we say? Oh, yes. I'll uh, I'll go into more details. I suppose I'm infinitely more qualified to talk about that. Okay, so. What we're going to, well, what is down there is, um, well, I'm not, I'm not going to lie. There's a couple of traitor space marines and uh, probably some of the toughest opponents the Imperium has ever faced. In fact, probably a little more dangerous than Brother Harad. They've got 10,000 years of experience on him. Genetically enhanced murder bots, essentially. Um, you've also got a... Rogue Mechanicum Adept, who is um, essentially complicit in harvesting the population to make, well, what would you say? Servitors? Rogue servitors? And that's being polite, rogue servitors. That's what we're going to find down there. I would use the word abomination. Okay, abomination. It's not very specific, though. I see. So, so it gets the point across. Correct me if I'm wrong, but what you're suggesting is that we bombard the site from orbit. That's what I'm getting from your description. Ordinarily, I would agree. Unfortunately, I'm under the impression that this hive is very strategic and we require the industrial capacity that the uh, infrastructure provides. Additionally, there are friendly forces on site. Um, there are. Yes. I thought everyone was dead. No, there are multiple teams still in the hive for Veronius. Yeah. Oh, them, yes. <laughs> and additionally, <laughs> uh, we need to confirm that we have found the right traitor and disposed of it. Oh, good point. I'll agree with that. I see the old-fashioned way. Well, very well. I suppose if you want to do it the long and hard way, I suppose we shall. And uh, Although... Oh, go ahead. I'll give you points for orbit bombardment. I I love uh, a discriminate, indiscriminate um, firing from orbit. Personal favorite of mine, but afraid not this time. <laughs> I'm mostly not too keen on it, but I just find it efficient. Uh, wasted ammunition sometimes, but yeah. And obviously, you're paying for the ammo. And yeah, actually, uh, if I can interject real quick, uh, Sawaya actually is already like, she has her finger hovering over the button looking at Lady Marbury like, I could do it. Oh, no, 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 that's all right. If you would, please. She relaxes. Maybe later. I'm going to note good. that button for future, re uh, future reference. <laughs> I might need it. <laughs> hmm, good button. Has Veronius... Uh, I address Lady uh, Marbre. Has Veronius given you any information about the traitor's last known whereabouts? I have a rough, uh, let's say, small bay of coordinates, a sort of sector that we can look within, but uh, anything exact is uh, unfortunately for us to discover. Hmm. Well, I suggest we start with the Mechanicum Spire. 
Are there yeah, any mechanical spiders ones. in there? Mm. I mean, there are quite a number in the hive. Well, well the last one, well, the one we ran into, at least. We we'll pick up the trail. Well, the captain just said that she had some had a sector for us that she want that she was told was last contact position. So, are there any mechanical spires in that sector? Well, it depends how big the sector is. Yeah, the sector of the planet. That's probably the I thought entire it was spire. Planet, yeah, <laughs> I thought it was planetary sector. So it's like the whole hive city. Yeah, the yeah. whole hive city. Uh, let's actually go um, to this map because I can actually point things out. Yeah. So uh, obviously we have uh, your old crash site, the old target, the old ad block, the old ad mech. Um, for flavor purposes, let me just draw this on the map. Uh, actually get the right tool here. All right. So the sector, uh, Marbury, that you know about is going to be sort of this pie-shaped wedge uh, in blue. Okay. And I would say that... In there? Yeah, I would say there are approximately four spires in this area. Wow. I will... Um, I'll gesture for a, um, a, uh, a person on the bridge to uh, hand me uh, a, a data slate or something. And uh, mm -hmm. I will basically, you know, show this to the uh, the squad and say, uh, as we're looking at uh, this little uh, section here, four spires in total. Uh, so we've got quite a bit of searching to do, but I think you'll find compared to the rest of the, uh, the planet, it's actually uh, quite easy going. Can we zoom and enhance it all so we can see them walking around? Well, uh, I'll say that our sensor equipment is currently in the process of being upgraded, so uh, I'm afraid we won't have that at the moment. And so why it chips in. <sighs> it's, uh, it's coming next Tuesday. Yes, next Tuesday. Additionally, most sensor equipment wouldn't be able to get through the atmospheric disturbance of the machine that we took down. Well, the atmospheric disturbance should be clearing up. We took one down out of a, an entire planet's worth of hives. Well, yes, and most uh, sensor equipment. <laughs> Not that I'm having anything impl implanted in the ship that isn't standard, mind you. Of course. Oh, of course. And I'd like to again flavor that the canoness is again trying to take Krantz, like away for a stern talking to. Oh, uh, um, we, what place was so close? Do you think we'll be able to do a direct drop instead of having to kind of circle around like we did before? That didn't end too well. Well, with the resources of the Vanishing Hand at our disposal, I imagine so, yes. Okay. Uh, at the very least, we won't... Well, I'm getting this data secondhand, but we won't crash the lander. I, I would prefer we avoid that as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I look at your second in command. Yeah, the last pilot didn't last too long. I wonder what happened to them. I hate them. Mercifully, <laughs> very, they were very mercifully, uh, they were put to the Emperor's mercy by Sister Krantz. And yeah. uh, if you will allow me to make a semi lewd comment, I think Thomason actually looks at Sister Krantz and says, Yeah, I'd let her give me the Emperor's mercy. Tommy. Sorry, sorry, came out. I will be more refined in the future. Thank you. As much as I appreciate you saying what we're all thinking. <laughs> Bearing in mind, I know what you're thinking. Yes, and... well. <laughs> Thomas looks at the lady captain, not sure if that is a joke or not, but... but smart enough to know to not ask. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Do you ever uh, yes, watch look, Eddie Izzard? Look at your console, Tommy. Yeah. Out of character. Do y'all ever watch Eddie Izzard? I have, yeah. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. there was one of his skits where he was he he just said something completely off the wall and he was like, Oh no, it's not real. Nice. <laughs> right. I mean, that seems like an Eddie Izzard thing to do. <laughs> That's what I see going on right here between the captain and her and her first mate. <laughs> Can he read minds? <laughs> no. Surely not. 
in his mind. Meow, 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 meow. Oh, God, the meow mix song. (laughs) (laughs) The area we have to comb through is much smaller than a previous target area. However, previously our target was very obvious. Now our target is in hiding. This is going to be much more difficult to flush them out. Oh, given there's lack of, uh, well, tainted snow, we've got targets this time, very specific targets. And mechanicum sites. Oh, looks well, like it's going to be That's what we're suggesting we examine first. We don't know if that's where he is. I think it's a reasonable assumption to make. Shall we uh, make our way towards the spire at the very exterior of the circle and work our way inwards? Yeah, and I'm actually drawing uh, each of the locations of this, the uh, Mechanicum Spires. Uh, they're going to be those red circles. Were there any uh, Were there any people or like any teams in that area? Or like, do we know anything about this part of the Habs city? Or the, sorry, this Hive city? Uh, you in general, do, like... in fact. Uh, let's see. Let me use a different color here. So let's use a white circle to represent what you may have saw the dots of light on Veronis's display okay. um so these white dots are other teams uh they are located to the southwest these and... ones have eidetic memories so i would point them out yeah okay so, so they haven't moved the, yet the, yeah okay that was, that was like an out of character thing because i wanted to propose something that i want to make sure it made sense if i may lord captain perhaps we should First, uh, get an idea of from from local teams in that area about suspicious activity nearby. Perhaps that could lead us to which site we should go to first. Very wise, sister. Uh, Tommy, if you would, uh, please uh, coordinate with the uh, ground forces. Get as much communication as you can from them, and let's see if we can narrow down our search. Yes, ma'am. Uh, it will take some time to run that cogitator, and, uh, well... To put it bluntly, ma'am, um, we're having, even with our totally standard equipment, we're having a little issue getting proper scans. Well, uh, as I always say, Tommy, um, just get on with it. Yes, ma'am. And he frantically runs over to a station and pushes the servitor out of the way and starts frantically running the data. And Lord Captain. Oh, oh, Yes. Do we have any idea about the motives of, of such a traitorous scum? Guessing at the motives of a traitor such as these, it only lead down to the path of madness. So I shouldn't speculate then? Probably better for your own well-being if you didn't. For now. Well, in that case, I have no idea. I find the easiest way to get into the mind of a traitor is the direct approach. Mm. Yeah, I was kind of hoping hoping, like our Inquisitor would like, you know, be someone trained in that kind of knowledge, would probably maybe be able to put something forward, right? Like, I could, but I'm not telling you. Yeah. Okay. Fair <laughs> enough. <laughs> this is still yeah. dangerous and dangerous information. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I only suggest that perhaps if we could understand its target, then we could know how to set a trap or know where its moves would go. I must agree with the sister here. Well, Real we... quick, um, remind me, because I'm trying to frantically find a forbidden lore or the equivalent thereof in skills. Um, do they still have the equivalent of forbidden lore uh, warp? Uh, I think it's rolled into the scholar yeah. skill, and there's sub skills within scholar. I All believe. Right, let me find that list real quick. Uh, let's see. Page 130. No, that's talents. Page 120. I know I read it somewhere. Yeah, it's important to know because it will definitely flavor, obviously, what you're rolling, but also what I can tell you. Uh, Let's see. On one hand, that would also be a corruption roll. Right. Like, on one hand, knowledge of what this 
traitorous faction of space marines is doing is probably you know something equivalent to a disadvantage because it's esoteric but we're also on this world and so we should probably or been on this world and we can maybe ascertain maybe whatever the key targets in that area could be and then we could maybe like you know that that could help right like if there's a refinery or something here or they're trying to like reestablish the smoke thing or you know what i'm talking about like the, the right, center, yeah. like like if there's some sort of vague thing we could even a guess or like multiple guesses not not necessarily know like the whole plan right, right, not, right, right. Not, i think so it'll it actually like, might be like thing. an advantage it might just be like a straight roll you know tactical information i yeah, think yeah, it'd yeah. be more of a cunning thing because cunning literally says your ability to think and act like those who operate outside the law oh yeah that's absolutely a kind of yeah i'm thinking more in terms of cunning then let's uh let's handle it this way um if you are trying to think like a traitor space marine even Shank might have words for you later, but that's beside the point. Okay. If you're thinking like a traitor space marine, I'll let you roll cunning. If you are literally looking at the data and applying what you know from a scholarly profession, a scholar role would apply here. Now, what I would say is that the scholar role is going to be a little bit harder than the thinking like okay. a traitor space marine. But safer as well. Also I'm the one positing yeah. the question. It wouldn't be me rolling. I, I, have a, also, I have a very small brain. I found where the uh, keyword scholar came from. There's a talent lore master, and you mm -hmm. choose a keyword, and that can be a Bureau of the Imperium, a Xeno species, or something esoteric and forbidden, like demonology. Uh, ah. All keyword selections are subject to DM approval, and whenever you make scholar tests with uh, related to that chosen keyword, you gain plus double rank bonus dice to that scholar test. Uh, nice. Including interaction attacks. Interesting. Well, uh, you know, I will make that sort of offer then that uh, if anyone would like to grab that, uh, we can talk about uh, what sort of perhaps forbidden knowledge you know. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll make a cunning check. Okay. Wow. I'm not going to lie. The DN was a seven. So Marbre... Uh, you know, we can flavor this however you'd like, but I'd like to imagine maybe you actually maybe have encountered a CSM before, and maybe part of your fame to claim is that you were hunting them down. Um, so maybe this is old hat for you. Maybe, maybe this is something that you've had skill with and sort of calling upon your experience. Um, what you would know is that sort of their first modus operandi is to establish a beacon to draw in other traitor legionnaires. So it would stand to reason if they are in a mechanic aspire, they are probably trying to build some form of a profane signal beacon to bring in their fellows. I will, uh, uh, Lady Marbury will take a deep breath and uh, steal herself for a second. Now, I, uh, if I may, um, I am a bit learned in terms of previous, let's say, cases against these traitorous scum. And, um, well, from, from my readings, uh, it seems like the first thing to do would be to create some sort of profane beacon to draw more traitors in. That seems likely uh, what they were wanting to do uh, in any of these the Mechanicus spires. So um, we're looking at a place with a lot of coverage. Uh, we're talking about a particularly uh, good altitude and uh, uh, Did you somewhere... scan for a beacon like that? I Since believe... I'm assuming you'd be putting something out. I believe I can. In energy source. I could probably feel it. These uh, traitors, okay. I hate to admit, used to be uh, Adeptus Astartes and they still do act even tangentially like that. So if I were in the situation where I were alone deep in enemy territory, I would want to try and get reinforcements as quickly as possible as well. Mm. What do you say makes sense? If I be if I be in psychic in nature, I could probably detect it. Well, uh, let's have, well, I'll ask, uh, well, Tom is busy. Um, uh, where, uh, Yes, Sawaya so actually kind of raises a hand and says, sorry, ma'am, I've been keeping up with the conversation. You uh, wanted to know about power sources in the area? 
Oh, yes. If it would be to a scan of the planetary surface and uh, any sort of unusual power spikes, if you'll let us know immediately. And uh, we'll ha- allow our, um, our friend here, and he'll, uh, she'll gesture towards um, uh, Shank, mm-hmm. to um, reach out and, uh, well, he do whatever it is you do. Breath. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there you go. Um, <laughs> actually, Sawaya says, I actually already have a report, ma'am. Uh, may I put it on the hollow screen? Absolutely, you may. All right. So the uh, one of the hollow displays on the bridge uh, becomes a zoomed-in image of this hive. And, uh, of course, it does illuminate the red admech circles. There's a few hab blocks it illuminates. Um, but the reason these are illuminated and not just all of them is that you're seeing at each one of these dots, there is an abnormal power reading. And I'm going to flavor that the reason that it's able to, like your ship is able to pierce through the sort of sensor dampening uh, properties of the planet is that this is more like a thermal camera that has been pointed down towards the planet. And you're seeing... um, Sort of use a contemporary example, like uh, a grow house, like if you're growing weed, um, sort of one of those things in the winter, like one of the ways that police and other law enforcement can find those out is they literally just thermographically scan an area (laughs) and they are able to see that sort of thing. So what you're seeing is something akin to that, where these areas are particularly hot. Uh, So all of the mechs and all of the... Yes, all of those Have dots them. that are in that wedge are illuminated. Uh, Marbury will sort of gesture towards the uh, display. Ah, there we are. There's our hot, hot spot, so to, so to speak. Um, so, why? Excellent work. Uh, remind me to cancel your pay docking. You were going to dock my pay? Forget I said anything. Yes, ma'am. That is... Far too many spots for the five of us to handle alone. We must oh. narrow it down further. Shank, are you feeling anything from any of these? I don't know if I'd have to get closer, but I can give it a, I can give it a go. Yeah. I mean, it's going to be a high DN, but go ahead and roll me a Psychic Mastery. Shall we open a window? Please don't. Wow. Yeah, I think the difficulty windows... was a seven. So, yeah means I get to narrow down these dots. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to waiting fill... for perils. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <That's good. laughs> uh, I'm actually going to fill in the dots. So if they're not filled in, uh, they are not reading uh, psychically. But if they are filled in, uh, you are getting a little bit of a ping back. Mm-hmm. All right. So there's that. There's that and that. So there should be four filled in dots. OK, so do you have lots to make? I'm gonna, cl- I'm gonna close my eyes, and after about five minutes, there's some blood trickling out down my nose. I'm just gonna start pointing to bits on the map. Here, 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 and here are active areas. I think the Advec block uh, locations are gonna be our first bet. We can do the Hab blocks later. They're not gonna reach as high, and they don't have as much tech inside of them. We should. Follow Captain Marbury's suggestion, going from the furthest out to the closest to the center. That way we can funnel them towards a, put their backs against a wall. Shall we uh, get something for your, um, you've got a little. Oh. uh, No, we'll be fine. Right. Well, I think we have a game plan, and I think we're, it behooves us to start as soon as possible. Actually, um, I'm pretty hungry. Um, you got know, anything to eat? If, 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 if I may, I think that going the opposite direction would actually back them up against the wall. A so little from the center wall. out, it pushes them up against the external wall. Or is if we push from the outside in, we're just pushing them towards the center and then across. Because those that's that's just there's nothing to prevent them from just going through the center of the hab air of the spire. 
in either case, it is it would be more difficult to keep them from escaping in a place we would not want them to escape to. However, if we go from the outer edge to the center, if we can manage to link up with the other ground forces, we can have them converge and cover the areas outside of this search zone, which would allow us to push them into a potential kill box. If I can add one quick detail, uh, Shank, one of those uh, teams of Veroniuses, the Southwest one, you're pretty sure they have not just one, but three psychers with them. And to feel that there's three specifically like that, you're dealing with something on the level of, well, to put it bluntly, I'm not saying alpha level, but they're pretty damn powerful. I'm not going to mention anything just yet. Okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll make a note of it. One more uh, suggestion, uh, Lord Captain, about tactics. Yes, go uh, ahead. It's from my personal experience that we shouldn't keep a canonist waiting much longer. And if we would behoove oh. the rest of the group, perhaps I should be excused. Oh, yes, you're right. Yes. If you would, please go and placate her. Uh, more like being a punching bag verbally, but yes, thank you. Oh, that's what I meant. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, for flavor's sake, uh, we're actually going to have that conversation uh, on the lift itself. Yeah, um, she can't wait, for sure. Yeah, like she's not going to wait. Like she's going to wait until you are yeah. in um, the lift alone. And then she's almost literally going to punch the stop button. And the canonist looks to you. Opens her mouth as if to say something, pauses, closes her mouth, shakes her head, and then finally opens her mouth again. And this time, she doesn't yell at you, but it's definitely the kind of I'm disappointed dad kind of voice. Yeah. And she says, sister, I need to be very blunt. Why did you shoot the brother in the back? It was an accident. And believe me. When I say that there has been no harsher critic than myself about this. I see. So you are not the one responsible for his missing arm. Oh, no. No, no, no. Certainly not. I see. And um, I, I look oh. at her like, how much does she like doing that? How much do you know about the mission and how much is classified? What can we, you know what I mean? Like, I'm kind of doing that without saying like, mm -hmm. how much do you know of the mission? I only know that when I learned that a Astartes was shot in the back by one of my sisters, I came rushing to find out the why. Yes. Oh, we are. <laughs> no, that that loss of an arm belongs to a demon. And she gets deadly serious, like her her lines in her face increase, and she says, "What do you mean?" I did not mince my words, Canonis. Some mean... creature. Creatures. You mean to imply that there's a great source of corruption on this world? Oh, yes. I'm trying and... to save whoever can be saved. And uh, what happens is she shakes her head and uh, she reaches into her pack. And from the pack, uh, she is going to pull out not a hand flamer. Um, I'm actually trying Heavy to flamer. find it in the armory. Uh, let me find it real quick. I had the page and then I lost it. Uh, do, 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 do. Range weapons 216. She gives you a... Here it is. Uh, are you familiar with an Inferno pistol? uh kind of it's a hell gun uh, pistol yeah she more or I less the warp flamer one because i'm a thousand suns guy <laughs> i don't know i don't know <laughs> what are the inferno one uh basically an inferno pistol is a pistol sized melt -a gun oh awesome uh it Whoa. actually also has the adeptus sororitas keyword so it's okay for me to get this to you um, oh yeah but the one thing That's i would say sick. 
is as she hands you this weapon, she says two things. First, sister, if I find out you hit any of your teammates with this weapon, next time I will not be so kind. The second thing, I only secured one reload, so don't waste your shots. Oh, absolutely. I, I'm, I'm like holding it in my hands, like looking at it, admiring it. I'm like, absolutely, I will. I will do whatever I can. I, I, I will be training constantly until we depart. Well, that's a good thing. We're heading to the half of a normal pistol. Yeah. I gotta so, be close. Uh, she, she actually kind of smiles and says, it's a, it's a good thing we're headed toward the firing range then. I got, uh, what was it, Sawaya, was it? I got her to tell me where the firing range was. And of course, I am going to drill you until yeah. I'm absolutely sure you are able to hit the broad side of a fucking barn. And, yeah. you know, we sort of cut away from that. Which is good, because I'm raising my ballistic skill. So this is, yeah, <laughs> the montage, right? Of, mm -hmm. of me shooting, but louder than the bolt gun rounds is her <laughs> remarks about my aim. <laughs> like, almost and literally like a drill just hear, sergeant. I have a question, actually. Being, being drilled by that. a cannon is, is the worst. But, yeah, go ahead. What you got, um, Brother Rod? Since this is a frigate, which is a, in the grand scheme of things, a relatively small ship, mm -hmm. uh, does this have a separate firing range and training, uh, like, uh, training area? Or would it be a firing range and, like, just a, like a big all-purpose training area for the, uh, the... Well, Marbury, it's your ship. I would say it would be a sort of a, a pretty wide open space that's been set aside for like it's the the equivalent of like a, a multi-purpose room or a rec room, you know, but whatever we can fit in there. There may be a side that's about, you know, uh, uh, weapons Starboard, testing. Gun range. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So pool table. <laughs> swimming pool. Yeah. At some point uh, as uh, Sister Kranz is being drilled by the canoness, uh, Brother Harad will walk in and just like take off all his armor, strip down so he's just wearing uh, pants and just go to town on a training dummy. Okay. Uh, for flavor's sake, go ahead and roll me as if this was an unarmed attack. All right. And yeah, also roll me some damage on that. Again, I'm doing this strength, to make sure right? that your uh, your new strength bonus is calculated properly. Oh, I thought you were trying to say if there, there's a sufficient damage to the montage part. That's always oh, no, when there like, is. you break the bag. There you know is. I mean? like, it's always the end of every montage. <laughs> there definitely is. All right, so... Oh, wait, hold on. The, the damage is just my strength rating, I think. I don't need to roll anything. Let's double check, because again, I feel like works. this... Is it just strength? I believe unarmed attacks have a damage equal to your strength rating. Uh, let's see. Because of yeah, course, because melee weapons add some damage to your unarmed, uh, to your base strength. I'm, I'm looking, looking at page. You don't have anything. It's just your base I'm, strength. I'm looking at page 183. An unarmed strike uses your strength attribute as the damage value and has plus one ED. Oh, ah, nice. that's what we're looking for. It does even one. more damage than I thought. All right. Ooh, so yeah, you deal a just... uh, grand total of six damage. So yeah, you are going to town on this punching bag. And I'd like to flavor it that as you are slamming your fists into it, you finally do one of those like almost knockout punches. And not only does the bag go flying off the chain it was hanging through, it flies in such a way that Krantz, as you're lining up a new shot, you depress the trigger but too slow, you see the bag move into your field of fire, and you pull the trigger completely, and a bolt round flies out of your gun, hits the training bag, and explodes it into feathers and other sorts of debris. And uh, your cannoness says, okay, first of all, that was kind of cool. Second of all, what the absolute living expletives. I'm the I'm the punching bag. Right. So, brother, not, wanting, go... to, not <laughs> wanting to see my teammates being punching bags, I'm gonna stand next to the cannoness while smoking. Like, 
think you want to, you know, lie up a bit, you know, mellow out. Life's a bit too short for all this. Roll me a fellowship, or cunning, or persuasion. Um, oh, is that is this is that an even possible ask from a canonist? Who's I mean, literally <laughs> the most uptight person probably out. You know, it so all let me get this straight: an inquisitor is asking a canonist who is training somebody who's in trouble to chill out. Yeah, inquisitorial agent. Sorry, you sorry, you're right. Not even an inquisitor, an inquisitorial agent. Is like what I'm asking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Are you aware of the stakes that there is there is a lethal <laughs> intent? <laughs> <laughs> I'm aware. I could roll a fellowship, or I could compel this woman. <laughs> you could, but remember, there's that whole witch angle that the sisters generally don't like. I'm going to give it a go. And this is how the party killed itself. Oh, oh my peril! Yes! Oh <laughs> my God! That's a so. Let me get this straight. So, the inquisitorial well, agent you just made an enemy for life. The, I, the the inquisitorial agent just told the canoness who's training a sister of battle who's in trouble to chill out, and warp shit happened. <laughs> no, it doesn't have to. It's not. Oh, it is a power. Oh, oh God. God. There's a uh, perils happen. Some warp shenanigans does happen. But I think the power does go off. Oh, oh yeah. The power still succeeds, but we now need to do perils. Of Use the voice. Finally. Finally, I get to do perils. All right. So uh, let's see. You're the you kind of rolling... person who plays wild magic. Don't Sorry. You? <laughs> yeah, sorry, Hex. I don't know if anyone briefed you the amount of complications we roll on our wrath die. <laughs> All right, at least it's here. Yeah, at least it's in a small window. Yeah. All right, so, uh, so. you're rolling two d six for me, and the first d six will be the tens place. The second one will be the ones place. Okay, so first. Also, I've been d6. loving your role play, by the way. You've been oh, fantastic. D6. All right. Oh, hold on. That's done it wrong. <laughs> Actually, no. Uh, it exploded, but we can take that first one, the six and the four. Let's take that one. Oh my god. Oh my god. That's what you want to hear. You oh the... my god. Can I keep the ship? Oh no, you can keep the ship, but the canoness is going to probably have words. So, you of course Did sail the shank, DM? and you sort of use a little bit of your power to uh, maybe infuse your words with a, um, again, to use the word power, a little bit of force, a little bit of compulsion. And it happens like this. The canoness does relax a little bit. However, something begins to happen. Normally, when your power happens, you're able to control uh, when the power stops, like you're able to stop the power from running away from you. However, well, I'm just going to chill out a bit too much. Exactly. <laughs> So everyone within 25 meters immediately shuffers 1d3 shock as warp energy invisible. So all of you don't know why you're losing shock. You just feel more fatigued. You all feel a little more fatigued as warp, washed, as warp energy washes over the scene. Ooh. Um. So does our purity of faiths have anything have any say on this, or is the seven over that art's already factored in? Um it just says immediately all creatures in the area must suffer one D three shock. I meant I meant the compel roll because like ah. it's harder to do psychic tests in the presence of sisters of battle. This is true. Let well, me look up compel. Stack? Let's see. Compel. I don't know if they stack or not, but it's like you and your allies gain within 15 meters gain plus two bonus dice to corruption tests and plus two dice to any tower to resist the effects of a psychic power. Is compel not telepathy? It's a minor psychic power. Ah, okay. Let me consult the miners. Uh, let's see. Compel. Waiting for Ben's quip about miners. Why would you have to look up children? Ah, here we are. The target creature must success successfully pass a DN4 willpower or is compelled to obey. Okay, yeah. Uh, so she needs to succeed at a DN2, right? If she's a canonist, her willpower is one of her strongest stats, for sure. Uh, easily, yeah, she succeeds. Easily a four. Yeah, yeah, she succeeds. So what happens is, maybe Shank for a moment, 
you know, she maybe starts to nod along with you, but then her pure righteous fury catches up her, with her and she says, no, get her. She's, she can't eat shit. Don't like, you invoke the powers and voice on me, which I was there when they were written. <laughs> exactly. Like there you go. You know, she, she, she can't. Yeah. I feel like a canonist. Sorry. Go ahead. No, you're fine. I love the additional flavor. And okay. she actually, Shank, I'd like to say for fluff purposes, she grabs hold of your collar and makes to start dragging you in front and says, all right, Kronz, you have a new target. You see this man? You're going <laughs> to yeah. shoot at him until he learns his place. <laughs> Not knowing if my canonist is joking. <laughs> So Brother Harad will obviously stop the Canonist with the, yeah. a gentle hand on the shoulder. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Say, this one, not this one. And she and actually is just you. going to be very quietly over in one of the other <laughs> lanes, shooting his long las, <laughs> trying to ignore what's going on over there. You're behind like seven rows of, of ballistic <laughs> glass, glass and, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> oh but uh actually yeah so brother harad when you do that uh the canonist stops lets down shank and looks up at you with a look of reverence and says if that is your wish just nods and then he goes back over and continues his uh training his forms and i would say one of the servitors in the area has already brought you a new punching bag because, you know, I think it's fair to say Marbury runs a pretty good ship. Well, in I'd any think... case, I'm getting bored. Um, just a crance. How would you feel about a friendly boxing match? I'd I like to... Uh... Sorry, go ahead. So I looked to my canonist for permission. I I feel like around her, it's, everything's a very much a mother may I mm -hmm. situation. The canonist nods and says, yes, but um, no power armor. None. No enhancements. None. Oh, for you oh, anyway. Yeah. I mean, fair yeah. enough. Um, I was going to say rules. No armor. Bare chested. Well, bare chested. Some clothes are allowed. Gloves. The canoness scowls bare at basics. you and goes, If you were not who I knew you were, I would kill you. No, you wouldn't. She, like, does one of those <laughs> motions where she starts reaching you... for her bolter, but thinks better of it about halfway through it you literally made an enemy for life <laughs> yeah like no 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 joke like you are now on her shit list for life no hope, well, hopefully you never need to go to enoch well i'm older hereticus so the amount of priests i've burned has um already got me on a shit list this is true uh fair okay. but uh marbury i think you were trying to say something Oh, I was going to, uh, there would going to be a, a crackle of the comm system and over a loudspeaker in, in the, the rec room, you'd hear Marbray say, um, uh, excuse me, um, does anyone know exactly why uh, several of our uh, crew members in the, uh, in the, uh, oh God, what's that? The, oh, in, in the galley quarters have gotten, uh, let's say, loose in the last five minutes? No. No. What no one got what? What? What got loose? Uh, well, they've gotten very, um, let's say, lax about their duties. Uh, in fact, one of them, I believe, is actively sleeping. Uh, <laughs> actively sleeping—that's a new word for it. Just wanted to check and see if there was anything. Oh. To do with our, our new guests. I'm going to do um, a hand solo. No, everything's fine. Everything's fine here. How are you? It's all good. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> I love it. And, I absolutely uh, love Harad it. is going to look at Tori and say, actively sleeping is the only way I know how to sleep. Everything I do is intentional. Yeah. I'm just going to go back to firing down range. Uh, anyway, bring I out the the canonists, would, the canonists would probably answer uh, saying uh, nothing that we haven't taken control of right I'm yeah sure exactly like, like the say, right? gives marbury like no everything is actually fine we we don't know what's going on etc cetera, etc cetera. Yeah. uh but marbury actually what i would say is because we all know scuttlebutt travels at the speed of scuttlebutt 
Like as soon as you, you know, turn off your comm, uh, Thomason's already next to you, uh, Lady Marbury, and says, I believe there's going to be a fight, ma'am. Would it be okay for us to set up a betting ring? Oh, um, well, why the hell not? Uh, we haven't had any way to sort of uh, release our stress valves in quite a while. Sure, what the hell? Let's all ring them down. Very good. I have two to one's odds on the sister. Who would you like to bet for, ma'am? You know, I'm going to bet on uh, our sister, actually. Something tells me that she's got a lot of fire in there. And of course, uh, by the time a basically a ring is brought out, uh, I actually do have a generic combat map that we can use for this purpose. Cool. Uh, by the can time, I spend the time real quick. I'm sorry. Can yeah, I spend okay. the time to uh, recover my shock? That was yeah, you can, you okay. can recover your shock. All right. Thank you. Uh, let's see where I put. I need all shot. everything I got. So. All right. So uh, let's say, for sake of argument, there are a few rules here uh, besides the whole, you know, no armor no psychic powers, et cetera, et cetera. Um, there is an actual ring. Uh, it's going to be this green ring. Uh, if you step outside that ring or are thrown outside that ring by any means, you automatically uh, forfeit the match. Um, in terms of how long the match goes for, uh, it is until you either suffer your shock. Because um, what we're going to do is we're not going to actually have you take wounds but if you would take wounds, you would then take the equivalent amount of shock, if that makes any sense. That makes sense, yeah. But yeah, uh, we'll say Shank and Krantz, you square up. Uh, at this point, uh, everyone in the training area has sort of made a sort of a circle around the circle uh, and is like frantically exchanging, you know, promissory notes, bits of paper, actual like thrown gelt, uh, things of that nature. And through it all, I'd like to imagine Torvian is just trying to go... All right, downrange, fire at the weapon. You know, Torvian's just trying to keep to himself still. And he also wants to join in the crowd. <laughs> I might. I just, I just thought it would be funny to flavor it that way. No, I'm, I'm completely ignoring what's going down, going on down there as best as I can. He's a sniper's patience. Mm -hmm. And Harad but... is still going through forms. He's gotcha. basically meditating by punching things. All right. So, uh. In terms of how this combat's going to work, um, whoever moves first is going to be decided by initiative order. Um, so That's if each of you could roll initiative make, yeah. here. No fear. Nice. Nice. Ooh, All right. I'm so beating. what I'm going to say is the complication is that, Shank, we're going to treat this like she has already gotten an interaction attack on you. Um, so it is much harder for you to hit her. And uh, I'm going to say Kronz, why don't we flavor, what is his complication? Why is he, why is it more difficult to hit you? Uh, because I've grappled him. Okay. <laughs> Can I, could I have immediately have moved to make a grapple or, um, or does it have to be something more like, did I get in his head? Like, yeah, let's or, say is, you get are, in are you saying something bit. like that? Oh, yeah, okay, okay, okay. Head. Um, what did I say? I doubt you. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm failing to come up with like a sick burn because you've already so, been burned. So <laughs> I think that's probably what thing, you say. Then I think the, that's okay. exactly what you say. <laughs> the only thing I could think that Sister Crimes would step in the ring and she'd just mutter under her breath, "God, I need this," and just that would be like, "Ah, uh, should I done fucked up?" Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. I actually, I like that a lot. All right. So yeah, uh, you may move and uh, punch him as you see fit. Um. So real quick, is how do you throw someone out of a ring? How do you manipulate people's movement? That's is that through grappling? It is grappling, and of course, grapple rules are always those kinds of rules and systems where people go, "Oh God, why?" It's. it's a, I think it's a, it's just an opposed strength test. But the idea yeah. here is that, um, I want to be. I want to try to like hit you or and or like get you so you can't hit me back because like you're grappled and try to throw you out of the ring but mm -hmm. I'm, i let's just say for the first i'm gonna hit you let's just do that okay um i don't have my unarmed attack set up which is on me uh, it should just be your straight weapon skill anyway okay um 
how far away from each are we from each other? Uh, whatever the ruler says, I believe that's what uh, eight meters. So I could literally just sprint at you and charge and and try to and try to hit you with a single strike. So that's what I'm gonna do. All right. So I get a bonus die for charging. Mm -hmm. So out of the gate, I fly at you. Uh, do I want to spend a wrath? I do want to spend a wrath. This is this is, feels so good, and this is the best thing I've ever wanted to do right now. Right? Um, this is this is true catharsis for for Rosencrantz. Mm -hmm. Wow. Wow. Um, what is what is seven. your defense there, Shank? My defense, my natural defense without any armor is two. So, then yeah, you can definitely you shift blow. that six. Well, I can only shift one. Yeah, that's a little unfortunate, but that's fine. I uh, spend a wrath there to do that. Um, so now it's damage. Damage is equal to strength five. plus one ed. Strength plus one. Okay. Is there... <clears throat> so I just roll strength with one bonus die. Right. I can just do that. Think, right. That'd be the, I think that'd it's be equal the same to right? the strength value. Yeah, the strength the value. So what is your strength value? Rating is three. Okay. So then roll a d6, and we'll add whatever the number of icons you get onto the three. Oh, wow. All right. That's uh, five damage. So, uh, Shank, what do you have uh, natural like resilience power wise? Natural toughness wise. Where's the resilience stamp come? It's one plus toughness. Okay. Uh, oh, I'm, uh, yep. So, one plus toughness. So, I'm resilience five. Resilience five. <laughs> well, uh, what I'm going to say then is, Kronz, as you rocket forward and deliver. Uh, a punch to let's say Shank's stomach, you know, going through that, you know, yeah. knockout blow. Um, you hit his stomach, but he just sort of looks down at you and smiles. If it's meets resilient, it's still one shock damage, isn't it? Correct. So you are still going to take one shot, Shank, yep. but in the so, grand um, scheme of things, yeah. yeah. Okay. But now it's your turn, Shank. What would you like to do? All right, I'll just double check one of the rules because um, there is a all-out attack, but I don't. There think is. I, I actually do. have yeah, it it's ready. Plus for two you. dice to your attack pool, but minus two to your defense. Yeah, um, I think you're going to hit me anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so I think I'll just all-out attack because my defense is too low. Um, so I'll all-out attack. I think. Okay. Um, just double check that rule. What is it called? Uh, all out attack. I have I have it open. It's page one eighty eight, and it's literally it's just plus two bonus dice. But then the next tar turn, you suffer minus two defense. To the, yep. Sorry, you suffer to the start of your next turn. So mm -hmm. yeah, it's only so... just us two. Well, it's just to damage, is it? No, to the attack no, roll, not to just the attack roll. Oh, just the attack roll. Okay. So you're more likely to hit. All right. So let's roll that. Okay. Weapon skill. Bonus die two. <laughs> And let's roll. And then since he had an interaction attack test, you it is one more difficult. So what is Kron's defense? Three. So with the additional interaction attack, Shank, I, you actually... Oh. Can I burn a wrath? Because I haven't can. burned one yet. Yeah. All right, you we go. have four. You do meet it. So yeah, go ahead and do your unarmed damage. Which is strength plus one. Mm-hmm. Uh, yep. uh, so let's take so that, that first only, roll. That only rolled your, your strength dice. Not yeah. Your strength we just want our strength CD. value, which is a four. So for him. It's a four. Yeah. So, just uh, so we'll take that first die. Uh, so that would be five. What is Sister Kronz's toughness? Or what is your resilience? Resilience. Uh, my base resilience, no armor is four. Okay, so you actually take one shock of damage as uh, Shank, you sort of do that flurry of blows kind of a thing and just try to drive her away with a overwhelming barrage of fist punches. But just like you took hers, she takes yours. Well, uh, can I... I don't want to soak with one. I'll just take the five to go down to five. <laughs> Uh, I mean, I, even I'm, if you did so, it's it, not it wounds, would... it's shock. Yeah, it's shock. Yeah. So. Okay. Oh, that's right. Okay. Mm -hmm. But yeah, uh, Kronz, uh, it is now your turn. And if I understand correctly, every single success you roll could be shifted here because his defense is effectively zero because of the all out attack. Indeed. Yep. 
this is this is my my moment and we don't have any glory to spend on this fight here <laughs> you have but... glory what happened to it we have four oh, we do we have I... a lot of glory <laughs> can we <laughs> but it's a team pool it's a team so it's a i would say pool. neither of them yeah. gets to use glory i'm okay, okay with, I think it's part of the with rules. taking half the glory and then letting them use one glory each i'm okay with that yeah let's do that so each of you will have one glory you can spend during the fight okay um, then I will. I like to spend my glory now for that extra damage, and I'm also going to all out attack on you. Okay. Um, so let me go to my weapon skill, and so then I'm going to go up to three bonus dice. All right, Ooh. which me you maybe want to reroll for more sixes? Yeah, uh, I'm going to spend my last wrath to reroll. Okay. Nope. Right. Uh, you can well, only shift one. I yeah, still only, only shift, shift one. one. You lucky. Jerk, man. That's because you can only reroll failures. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. All right. Uh, can only shift one. So that's a D six plus. No, is it two D six now? Plus yeah. my yes, two, it's two D six plus your strength. Uh, so uh, an, another so... five. So another stress. Okay. See, at this point, I'm going to say for thematic sake that the fighting is starting to get ugly. Like, Krantz, you're going for the, you know, the kick of the shins. You're going for, the, you know, the back of the leg kicks. You're going for maybe even a knee to the groin or maybe just a backhand across the face. And Shank, uh, it's it's dicey. You're still going to take the one uh, one's uh, stress or, yeah. You're still going to take the, the one um, shock. That's the word I want. You're still going to take yeah, the one shock. Um... But uh, what would you like to do? It is now significantly easier to hit Kranz. Well, I'm going to hit Kranz. It's a boxing match. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Makes sense. Uh, and I'm going to do an all-out attack again. So it's okay. just much easier to hit again. Well, now she's done a... Now defense value is one. Yeah. Yep. So that's three. That's enough. Unable to shift. Unable to shift. Or I could burn it with my last breath, though. You could. I think I will. Nah, yeah, still can't shift any. Yeah. So yeah, uh, strength plus one. It is uh, cursed 1D6. both of us, buddy. <laughs> so it's a strength plus one. Um, so I'll just roll a d6. Yep. Um, rather than do the old kerfuffle. Two, and yeah. So, just so four, Sister Kranz, I think you actually don't take any damage from this one. No. Yeah, so I, I'm able to block it, which is good. So now, um, rather than hit you back, though, I want to... Can I, like... How tactically can we move in this map here? Because I would uh, like to get closer to the edge of the ring and try I mean, to get it's... ready to, like, force you to throw you out. And even that means taking, like, an opportunity attack, which means I might go, like, defensive or something and move back. Mm -hmm. Or can I, mean, I, I move and ready in action? Oh, you can move and ready. I like to move and ready... Uh, so when you come at me, uh, I want to be able to like try to grab you and throw you at the ring. It's sort of like what I'm thinking here. I like it. Um, but I think I think moving out of your threatened range means you get to take a hit on me. Uh, it would, yes. You would Plus get an opportunity there. attack there, Shank. Mm. But uh, it has to be attack. a regular attack. It can't like be an all-out attack. Right, so I'll just roll my weapon skill normally. Your ballistic skill. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Uh yeah. And yeah, uh, you, you can could shift, one. shift that six. I'll shift that six. Yep, it's a rough move for me to try to do this, but I gotta try. So I'll just roll two D6. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh two. I believe that is two damage to Kranz. Um so, that's two six total, right? Uh yes. Okay, so I'm down to th Three out of six shock, then. Ouch. Okay. So, yeah, Kranz, as you move towards the edge of the ring, uh, Shank pummels you uh, in the side, and you maybe wince in pain, uh, but you yeah. steal through it, and you manage to get right up to the edge, and you turn and ready yourself for him to come at you. So, Shank, it is now your turn. What would you like to do? I would like to move backwards towards the center of the ring. <laughs> and I would like to make an interaction attack. Okay. What are you doing? I'm going to try and intimidate the sister because she has psyched me out. Yes, I'll just roll my intimidation. All right. May I make a suggestion after Shank's uh, turn? Sure. Yeah. 
So let's see. I believe the interaction attack normally it's an opposed. Um, yeah. Let me see. I would say maybe maybe a resolve. You know, something to resist this intimidation. Um. Okay. I can yeah, I, here it is. Uh, either intimidation or resolve. So whichever one you'd prefer. Oh no, the DN is the foe's resolve. Opposing oh foe's yeah, resolve. I can read. Oh, uh, I can okay. read. So what is uh, your whichever, whichever is higher? My re uh, wait, wait, w which one's higher between the two? Between yeah, whichever one's higher. Resolve. My intimidation is four. Okay, then yeah, I think. Oh, but Shank, you have plus one to because you have the burns. Oh yes, I do. So Kronz, I think what happens is he gets you to the center of the ring, or she gets to the center of the ring. Oh. Uh, mm, yes and no. Okay. Um, you can try to intimidate me and keep going, <laughs> but I am fearless. Oh. Ah, uh, yes. So you can, so what, it, you don't, but continue. So like, what do you try to say? Or like, what do you? Well, I don't say anything. I just kind of move into the center of the ring and just go. Yeah. So uh, yeah, more I just, of a taunt I, than an intimidate. Yeah, I I like wipe the blood from my mouth uh cuz all boxing fights have you have a little bit of blood coming from your mouth. Of course. Yeah. Naturally. And uh and I go and I kind of like stretch and I s tell you to come and um I can I, I can't heal or recover, can I? Nah, you can not spend a combat action to recover yeah. shock. Oh, can you? Um you I, have to spend a wrath to do so though. Well, uh We've got all of our wrath, so no. Nope. Do I have any faith? Uh, you would have faith, yes. Then I will spend my turn. I will spend. I was call on my faith and burn it to use my power, uh, which is my um, righteous wrath. Mm -hmm. uh, which, as a combat action, I can spend one faith to gain two wrath. Okay. I say, no way, agent. If you want me, you better come get me. I thought we weren't using powers. <laughs> Torvian says oh, in the back. Is that not a? Is, that, is my faith not a power? Oh, is that considered a power? I mean, if you want to if use, he can't it, use his psychic powers, then mm. um, well, then I, I wouldn't I wouldn't break the rules of the, the thing. It's not a psychic power. Yes, I mean, that's entirely up to you. Yeah, I I'll, think it's I'll an character you, Eric, choice. If you want to do it, you can. I'm not going to oppose you. I mean, that's what makes me more than human. Mm. You know, it makes me like the ability of being a sister. Is... I I'm just calling it because <laughs> you're my doing it. You're, you're using what makes you more than human. To gain an advantage in a boxing match, but he can't use what it makes him more than human mm -hmm. in this yeah, boxing but match. I this have a mechanical a way. Sure, I know, and I'm going to be a little Weasley here, but like I have a mechanical way of using my faith to mm -hmm. to, to aid me to fight, right? And yeah. he can use his mind yeah. to aid him, but he's not going to. Well, I'm, actually, I'm, I'm easy either that's way. So. True. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm actually going to side with the sister I, on this one, since uh, in in universe. The the faith is not a like a psychic power. It's not really a power. But it's it is something that they have to will. It is something that they have to make an effort to use. No, so she is it's like a manifestation. Yes, but she has to pray and activate her faith for it. That's why she's spending faith points on it. it mechanically, yeah, but in fluff, it's more like she just gets mad. Right. Right. That's Let's, exa that's mm. kind of what I was thinking. But listen, I'm gonna do it, and it's fine. And if I still win, and if if our agent friend wants to say that I cheated and wants to rematch any day, then we can do it. Okay. Yeah, I think that's fun. I think you know, there's <laughs> yeah. there's maybe role play. If that's you cool know, with you. Things for it. Yeah, I'm fine with it. I'm but fine. yeah, uh, as you're doing right. that, Kronz, that's I think my Marbury, combat action. Uh, yeah, Marbury, you had uh, something to say here. Yeah, uh, if I may, uh, Marbury would sort of kind of make a space for herself in the sort of big circular. Um, snatch-esque kind of crowd that's watching this <laughs> boxing match uh make a space and she would and, and of course you feel free to veto this uh mm -hmm. she she'll toss a whip into the uh the boxing match in between the two of you it'll sort of slide on the ground and she'll say uh well let's kick this up a notch shall we hmm no yeah. this is a mat this is a boxing this is a boxing match I will a whip I would leave it to Shank, and I think it goes to both of us. And I think, yeah, we both kind of, if you don't, if you want, Shank, 
I'm willing to say this happens. We both go to it, and but we both stop and like you, you're the, you get there before I do because I was doing my my faith shit, and you kick it out of the ring and you say that. Yeah, not. I like that it happen. happens, and I like that you get rid of it. Mm-hmm. Yep. All right. So yeah, the uh, I give you a the, nod. But then and, I think that also means we're in within range of each other. To, you now are we are, within yes. range of each other. And and if and I think it might be fair mm-hmm. to maybe re-roll initiative order because like that's what I was thinking exactly. Actually, so yeah. What if do you guys, think about that? If you guys okay. want to roll initiative here, uh, let's see what oh, happens. Right? Because there's like yeah. there's right there's like this interruption of the fight because it's like oh are we, we going to still be honorable or not? And then all of a sudden like this thing and we like go back to each other and then the fight just immediately starts again. So like who who has the upper hand of returning to the fight? Round two. <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, it's, it's a cool idea. Combat initiative. Go. Oof. All right. So oh, Shank, you get the leg up here. Hmm. All right. Remember. I'm gonna make a. I'm not gonna say all out attack this time. Hmm. Yeah, I'll just make a regular attack. No, hold on. No, no, no. Because considering Sister Kratz might use a faith, no, it's going to be all out attack this time. Okay. okay. He's coming at you like a spider monkey. <laughs> that does not go through my defense. And I think there's a combat complication. So, there's Shank, indeed. I'm going to roll it for you. No, we <laughs> You're can't out use of this, that one. Dude. <laughs> can't uh-huh. use that one. <laughs> Can't use that one. We're, we're going to re-roll that one. No. <laughs> Inconvenient target. GM discretion. Well, I think I know boss. exactly I mean, what's going it? to happen. So so Shank, here, here's what happens. So Shank, you go to swing and do uh, a maybe a hook around the right, but Kron steps out of the way, and you sort of lose your balance and go right to the edge of the arena. And right at the edge of the arena is the Canon S. And you literally just punch her chest plate. And she oh, looks down I at it. Of, I think it was more of the XO, but I, okay, I'm, I'm fine with that. He, uh, she looks down at your fist, looks at you, and just gives you the most shit-eating grin as she cocks her fist back and slams it into your face. So you're not going to take actual shock here, but I'm going to say that this is like a interaction attack on you once again. And you've also gotten on the shit list even more. But yeah, Kranz, it's up to you. What would you like to do? Uh, I was wondering if I was four meters away, which I'm not, uh, so I can't charge you. Um, but I'm going to, I want to shove you out of the ring onto the cannonist. That's what I want to <laughs> do. Like drop kick you. Do it. Do it. <laughs> um. I would like to consider this an all-out attack because I'm literally going to land prone at the end of this, you know? Like, I'm literally jumping and hitting you with both my feet, right? So it's like a Hail that. Mary. Either you're going to hit Shane yeah. or you're going to hit the Cannon S. Before, before you roll anything, I was reading the interaction attacks, and one of the things that they uh, give as an example is, um, like, pushing someone or, or tripping someone. Mm-hmm. Um, and mechanically, it gives a hindered or whatever thing. But uh, yeah. I think this is a good stand-in if you want to, like, push someone a number of squares is mm-hmm. to use an interaction attack if you want to do that instead oh. of making everything yeah. just an attack roll. Yeah, no, that that would be ideal. Yeah, um, so I would like to do that. In that like case, to... it would be a strength, I think, it's or like an athletics. athletics. Yeah, athletics. athletics. Yeah. And then it would be athletics versus athletics? Yes. Would, well, the your you DN... athletics, the DN would be his athletics. Okay, what's your athletics? Total seven. <laughs> oh god <laughs> are you for real yeah <laughs> all right well hold on my my sheet's still set up to be my rating as uh five let me turn down the adjustment to it there we go okay so for a dn do you use their pool or do you use their actual <laughs> ranks in the skill <laughs> okay their actual, got, their no actual it doesn't work ranks. all right i can't i so so we try i try to i try to shove you out and you are you are a, a like a Burned mountain wall <laughs> yeah and that's a Come combat on. attack, right? Yes, that is yes. your action. Yeah. Okay. Right. Can I do the same thing? Yeah. Yep. So, Kranz, what is your athletics? <laughs> I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> it's a four. <laughs> it's a four. Yeah, I think that's the end of the fight. Shank, how would you like to flavor throwing her out how of the ring? You throw me out of the ring. I'd like to do some sort of weird jujitsu move where I like grab hold of her like hip and then just 
toss her out of the ring. <laughs> yeah, you were gonna do what I was gonna do, only you, you literally reversed it in like an awesome uh onto the cannoness. Onto the cannon. Yes, yeah, of, of course. So let let's actually flavor it that way that you land on the cannoness onto the ground and uh you know you you sort of start to pick yourself up Kronz, off of the off the cannoness and she grips, you know, reaches up, grips a hold of your collar, gets you close so you can smell her breath and says not only can you not hit the side of a fucking barn, you can't even dodge a simple emperor damned. And we sort of pull back the scene from there as uh, everybody's cheering and collecting their, you know, rewards. Um, as we sort of get an external shot of our new sort of vessel in the area. And that's where we're going to end the session for today. But yeah, so yeah. next session, you guys will actually be on world and we can do actual combat instead of just punching each other <laughs> until something happens. I don't know. This is pretty satisfying. Yeah. Oh, wait. All right, ho hold like on. It. Hold on. Who won the wages there? Well, uh, if I understood Marbury correctly, she lost her wager. I did she lose was mine, on the yeah. sister. Yep. Yeah. Well, I didn't play as a bet, so damn. Yeah. yeah. All right, so we're going to still talk I as players afterwards, but uh, this is where I'm going to kill the stream. So uh, Twitch YouTube, thank you so much for tuning in. You'll see these lovely individuals next week. Later stream.